move from Baba to Ma. But do this demonstration. But the demonstration is to demonstrate to Jamama and Ghanaians that what is going on is bad. You, if, you are, if you are feeling the high, and if you, you are feeling the heat, if you are feeling the heat, like Ghanaians are feeling the heat, if you are buying electricity and they are having it for free, if your salary, you are spending 60% of your salary on electricity bills, then you understand what I'm suffering. Yes, I am suffering from yes, Muhammad yes, 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 yes. How do you expect the members of the the members as a collective to speak on your behalf. When you decided to give majority to such a bad government, NBC, can they should realize that they are tough matters? Your tough matters. Your tough matters. When you go and vote, you have to know that the consequences are ahead of you for the next four years. The tough that the NBC gave to Jamama has shown that they should never, never, never again, never again. Okay. Just toll the various sections of the road and we'll raise the money to do the roads in Ghana. But it doesn't mean we will not borrow money. It only means that we are going to borrow responsibly and not recklessly. No government can say they cannot, they won't borrow money. That is ridiculous. So far, the commitments that we received in China before leaving amounted to a total of 15 billion US dollars. And there is a possibility that within the next month or so, there are some discussions that we couldn't conclude that another 4 billion will be added to that. But this is by way of grant funding. As you can see, all the discussions we've had in China have to do with getting a new funding model, not borrowing, but use leveraging our resources to do so. If you look at this country, the money is there for development, but it stays up, it doesn't come down. The money is there, but it stays up, it doesn't come down. We are going to make sure we bring in a new economic model and make sure the money will come down to our villages for everybody who can cause of doom so and doom so it has been caused by the financial and economic mismanagement by of this government and so we shouldn't be giving them credit for solving a problem that they have so today we are gradually creeping into a situation that if i don't draw the nation's attention i will not have been doing my diligent duty to the good people of Ghana. This country is likely, most likely, to face load shedding in the next two years if urgent steps are not taken from this moment to increase our power generation. I say this on the basis of facts. For example, on the 15th of February, 2022, our peak power demand was 3,343 megawatts. On the 15th of February, just about a month and a half ago, that was the highest peak demand for power. On that day, our available power was 3,500 27 megawatts. We had a surplus of only 180 megawatts. Only 180 megawatts. So we were dangerously close to matching peak demand with total available supply. Remembering that the demand for power, power consumption, demand increases between 7% and 15% every year, year on year. And it takes a minimum of three years to bring on stream a new thermal plant. We seem to be sleepwalking into a situation of possible power outages as a result of supply limitations, I believe I have a responsibility to draw this country's attention to the danger 
we facing? This demonstration is not to topple the government. This demonstration is to indicate to Ghanaians the insensitivity of the Obama's government. The insensitivity of the Obama's government. This is not to topple government. We don't advocate for a regime change this way. We are going to vote next year and we are going to vote them out massively. That is good governance. That is partisanship. We are going to democratically remove the Obama from power. Not do this demonstration, but the demonstration is to demonstrate to Tomama and Ghanaians that what is going on is bad. You, if you, you are, if you are feeling the heat, if you are feeling the heat, if you are feeling the heat, like Ghanaians are feeling the heat, if you are buying electricity and they are having it for free, if your salary, you are spending 60% of your salary on electricity bills, then you understand what I'm suffering. So yeah. I am suffering. So no, 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 no. But how do you expect the members of the the members as a collective to speak on your behalf when you decided to give majority to such a bad government, NBC. Ghana should realize that their time matters. Your time matters. Your time matters. When you go and vote, you have to know that the consequences are ahead of you for the next four years. The time that Ghana gave to Tomama has shown that they should never, never, never again, never again. To give legal backing to the process of fiscal consolidation, the government is likely to be required by the IMF to pass a fiscal responsibility law. A fiscal responsibility law will require governments to declare and commit to a fiscal policy that can be monitored. It includes rules and provisions for transparency and sanctions. Mr. Chairman, in my lecture last year, and earlier in November 2013, when I delivered the Aliu Mahama Memorial Lecture, I offered the same piece of advice to government, but the Minister of Finance responded that it was not necessary. Today, because it is the IMF offering the solution, the government report response is that it is very necessary. Mr. Chairman, to prevent the runaway printing of money by the central bank to finance the large deficits of government. The IMF is requiring that Bank of Ghana reduces its lending to government to zero by 2016. Zero. This means that in 2016, Bank of Ghana would, would not be allowed to lend even a peso to the government. During my lecture last year, I offered similar advice. I cautioned that the printing of money was too much. The bank responded that it wasn't the case. But today the IMF is offering the same solution and they agree with it. Bless you. As the IMF has stated, government would be required to remove all subsidies on utilities and petroleum products. This will require, obviously, will cause a lot of hardships. The rule, removal of subsidies will also mean a strict implementation of the automatic price adjustment formula for utilities and petroleum. I would like to urge the government to publish all the elements of the automatic price formula so that we can all monitor. The first one is, is your tariff structure. Basically, the reason why you've seen tariff increases is because Ghana is selling energy to the public and to companies lower than production costs. Mm. Normally, in a balanced equilibrium uh, mm. mode or you know, modern economies, you, tariffs reflect the cost. Like anything, if you build a house, you buy material for $1 million, you cannot sell the house for, you know, for half a, mm. a, a million dollars, you lose money. So as an as energy producer, you should be able to recover your cost. Because if you don't recover your cost, who will do it for you? It's government. So that's one of the things tariff have to be adjusted. And there is a lot of work being done, not just the tariff structure. Yeah. Tariff adjustment is one thing, one thing, but your whole tariff system, tariff structure have to be done. And this is being worked on. And I think this we, there's, there's progress there. Where there's a, a lack of progress is in collection. Mm. You produce electricity, you sell, and then you co don't collect the money. Where is the money going? Other people are stealing electricity, or some companies are not paying, and uh, is ECG doing enough to collect? Probably not, as we see. And they recognize that they are implementing reforms. Hopefully, uh, we will support 
to improve collection. Sometimes, you know, it's not only in Ghana, governments don't pay their bills. Yeah. But here, I think, uh, again, as part of these whole things, there's debt from a long time. Uh, some governments, some ministries don't pay. And government has to get tough, you know. You, you get your budget, you pay your bills. Otherwise, you know, you know there are consequences. So, so uh, co collection is another thing. And technical losses. Technical losses is when you produce, you distribute electricity, and because either the, the, the cables are old, the infrastructure is old, then it gets lost somewhere there. And this requires investment. So this, this three, these two, three things are important. But another one, in the case of Ghana, is those contracts that you've signed, those PPAs, are just too expensive. Mm. Uh, you know, too expensive, and the kind of PPAs you sign is take open, which means Ghana is paying to the electricity that is not even being produced. Yeah. You have double capacity, yes, over time. You know, the usage will improve, so you, your excess capacity will go down. But the fact is, in the last few years, Ghana entered into some PPAs that were the wrong types, yeah. in our view, and at the wrong rates, at the wrong prices, and today you are paying dearly for it. And also, it has an impact because today we're talking of green, green uh, clean energy. Yeah. Many companies want to come to Ghana to do, uh, you know, solar and all. Yeah, government wants probably the best thing to do, but you're, you are still caught up with those that you have to pay because you are tied up in these contracts. So you will take new ones, you will pay them, you have to pay the other ones. So there's a really an urgent need to restructure these, uh, these, uh, these uh, contracts. I know that uh, government is, has entered into negotiations with mm -hmm. some of them. I think there's a long way to go. On 1st January 2017, the dollar CD exchange rate was 4 CDs, 1, 4 pesos to the dollar. Today, or yesterday, 4th June, the exchange rate was 11 CDs, 193 pesos to the dollar. Remember, power purchase agreements are signed in dollars, in USD. And therefore, payment is in USD. ECG's collection is in CDs. And therefore, when we mismanage the exchange rate, or when we poorly manage the economy, resulting in a deteriorating exchange rate, it impacts our ability to pay for the power we generate. I would have expected the World Bank country director to have placed more emphasis on managing the economy efficiently in order to create a stable exchange rate. The exchange rate between this period has virtually tripled. And must the PPE be the reason for the deteriorating exchange rate? The deteriorating exchange rate rather affects the tariff in the PPA. The World Bank and the IMF and the Ministry of Finance have failed to manage an efficient economy. They failed to run an economy that creates confidence to warrant a stable exchange rate. The exchange rate is a major, major, major driver of high tariffs on the domestic scene. So, gent ladies and gentlemen, I will really want the World Bank country director to come again. Rather than throwing partisan or seemingly partisan punches, he should, his intervention should bring us together to find solutions to the power sector challenges and not to create a political divide when we need to pull together. I have, as I have indicated, I have shown that his statement is factually inaccurate and does not inure to the good of Ghana. He should come again, he should have a holistic picture, and we will engage 
I speak here as the former minister of power under whose signature a number of these PPAs came before parliament. It is important that Ghanaians know that we have exhausted our major hydro potential. Energy sector, the current power cuts. Some people are saying that you made mention of this, you use this as a campaign against John Mahama, and now we are experiencing worse, a worse situation under under um, President Akufuado. Would it reflect in the 2024 election? Would it be um, something that people will stand on to vote? If you are comparing four years, four years, MPP administration, energy sector is 300 times better than John Mahama. But we are still experiencing doom so. Nobody has said we haven't. I'm just saying it's far much better than Joe Mama ever did. You, you do admit that there's doom so. That is the word you used. I have never used that word. I promised you that we are going to work on it. And it's not a work that is a single event. It's a process. And we'll continue to work on it for the energy sector to become better. Have you heard of calls for a timetable? Ask those who want it to bring it. They should bring the timetable. If, they, if there is, I, have, I haven't seen any timetable. So when my people are calling for it. Say bring a timetable. What do you mean? The ECG says that there is no timetable coming. Why do you want to bring a timetable? What purpose? Why? Why? Why would somebody get up and wish evil or bad for the country? No, it's, it's when it is not planned. When it's not planned, you can't tell the person. So the is it? Is it? If, were you in Ghana and that your mama? Did you live in this country and that your mama? Did you live in this country and that your mama? Did you? I'm asking you a question. Did you live in this it was equally worse. It, it cannot be equally worse. But look, MPP use it as a tool against. And I'm saying that even if you are talking about that, it was worse under your mama than ever now. The energy sector, the current power cuts. Under my tenure as president, our challenges in the power sector became so severe, I accepted the responsibility and took some bold decisions to provide a sustainable solution to the problem. I did not throw my hands in, in the air in despair and blame my predecessors for the crisis. When the Akufuado Baumia MPP government took over, they have disingenuously tried to take credit for the work that was done in the power sector. And they rather blamed my administration for investing in excess capacity. Today, the country has been plunged into darkness. Mismanagement of our generating assets and collateralization of the ESLA, which was meant to provide the resources to finance current and legacy debt, has led us back into doom so. The best government can do is to eat humble pie, take responsibility for the problem, and work to address it. Unfortunately, that is not the case. I'm aware that businesses and households cannot plan because of the erratic power situation. When citizens demanded for a shadow to enable them plan, which is the least that a responsible government should be doing, Energy Minister Dr. Matteo Poku Prempe, who was one of the frontline participants in the Dumso Must Stop campaign while in opposition, is reported to have said that those asking for a load shedding timetable wish ill for the country and they should publish their own schedule. This is most disrespectful to Ghanaians and the customers of electric power. What is the difference between the ordinary thief? And a political thief. Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob but you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you because we choose them we vote them we blindly say we are not blind who is deceiving who the ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief is it not but we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief is that not what we do 
gods will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our joy, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth, you are doomed. And that is where our country has got into. We need to rescue this country. We are lying. And I feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time. This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallah. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. Government is broke, government is broke. But people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. Um, borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, hello, good morning, welcome to the show. This is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. Well, it's a Wednesday, the 17th day of April, 2024. Quite a very, very special day. Okay, this is the day my first son was born. <laughs> this is always a special day uh, for me. But um, our gratitude will go to Most High God for the rare privilege of being alive and, of course, the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making the rounds here in our dear Republic. I'll let you into our panel for the morning's conversation shortly. Let's take a look at the front page of our newspapers, Daily Graphic. 2024 Green Ghana Day launched. 10 million trees to be planted. Former Maslok boss jailed 10 years in absentia. PURC fines ECG 5.86 million Ghana cities for service delivery breaches. Odor Basin, bridges causing flats to be removed. Ghanaian Times. Boost for reforestation. Green Ghana Day launched to plant 10 million tree seedlings nationwide. Former Maslok CEO jailed 10 years in absentia ahead of operations gets five years. Economic impact of a Kosombuk on dam spillage. Affected communities lose 1.6 billion cities in Greek livelihoods. That's the FAO's assessment. Omni Bisek Bank posts historic 150 million cities profit in 2023. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations uh, to the MD and, of course, the entire team at Omni Basic. Daily Guide. Fugitive Maslok boss officer jailed 15 years. NDC runs from a Jisubai election. Men's gold customers petition AG over Namwan properties. PRC finds ECG board 5.9 million cities. My credit score gets credit bureau license. A new crusading guide, ensuring smooth running of educational institutions. Government releases 26 million cities to suppliers. Why gas turbines name must change. Ameri in Ghana stands for fraud, rent seeking, and corruption. Kujon Safuapuku. DHM Construction Limited reacts to arrest warrant story. We don't know any Wela Deng. Blaze CEO supports Olo Community Uboho. Ioko clears road and highways ministry of Professor Stephen Adair's bribery allegations says it's unfortunate. Kings Lewisu Brobe chairs NPP UK New Chapter. Now Toshiado tells religious leaders, create atmosphere for, for political religious tolerance. The insight. Mahama, he says the Kufuado and Baumia regime the biggest political scam in the Fourth Republic. Iran warns of stronger, decisive military response against future Israeli aggression. From doomsorization to digitalization and back to doomsorization, a poet's reflection. 
No mining in water bodies and forest reserves under my presidency, Alan assures Western Region. <clears throat> Missing BVDs. Election Watch Ghana rise to EC to share BVD BVR information with political parties. Return junk food, in quote, donation to Israeli ambassador, Komok to Alaji Banda. The informer. Kumasi Hercules strikes. Who is Kumasi Hercules? Arrest Ashanti region ECG boss. One million cities bribery allegation. Yoko exonerates contractors and ministry. Describes for Zadeh's claim baseless. Cash waterfall mechanism audit. PURC cracks whip on ECG. Board members to cough up 5.868 million cities. A Jisoo by election. NDC chickens out. Addressing increasing insecurity challenges. Ghana calls for collaborative efforts. The Inquisitor. Enlistment into police service. DCE confirms sale of protocol. Sam Jonah to launch GJ's 75th anniversary. NDC to outdoor running mate on April 24. UCC Council Chair raffles feathers over decision to withdraw court suit against contractor. Stop press. Chinese Iron Lady Wela Deng unveiled. The Daily Statesman. 10 million trees for planting. Yana Eji support for June 7, Green Ghana Day. Court jails former Maslok CEO and manager. Na Toshi urges leaders to champion tolerance and peace. Where is Aban Bagbin? Okay. Uh, There's a question posed by the paper. Okay. The Daily Searchlight. Stop charging as double VAT on cars. Korea Importers Association. NDC to officially outdoor running May April 24. Sam Jonah to launch EJ's 75th anniversary. Edward Jiri Zongo Chiefs call on Ochihini, reaffirm allegiance to Ochiman. Ghana hosts Clash of the Legends Festival on Friday. PURC orders CCG to pay 446 million cities to cash water for beneficiaries by end of April. The Ghanaian publisher promotes peace and tolerance. Now Toshi charges leaders. Green Ghana Day targets 10 million trees as Jinapo demands more conservation efforts. Ex Maslok boss jail 10 years for causing 90 million cities financial loss to the state. Dakra Times. Northern Brothers join hands to stop LGBTQ plus activities in Ghana. Climate crisis is worsening. Samuel Jinapo, Bagbin to Grab Footprints Award. NDC to EC. The time for excuses is over. The new finder, GRA steps up game to enforce tax on foreign incomes of resident Ghanaians. 10 million trees to be planted on June 7. Ex Maslok CEO said in Atamaklu, jail 10 years. Religious leaders must champion tolerance and peace. Na Toshi. Daily Post. NDC to officially outdoors 2024 running mate Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman. Mahama accuses the Kufuad of mortgaging the future of Ghanaian youth. Show me the projects from the loans you have taken, Mama Dez Ekufuado. Recommissioning of a Mary Power Plant, an indication of a clueless government, NDC. Economy Times. Gold for oil policy may be reintroduced. That's CD Weekends, Bank of Ghana. Fish Solutions predicts 3.5% growth rate for Ghana in 2024. FBN Bank Profit Jams records 178% growth. And that's about it. For the front pages, we'll be back shortly. It's me and Muediani Pia. Yan Sioka Krebi, a moon and Nani Ham Nene Dedi. Delicious. Said your mamma, it's here no pepe. Yet the fortune and Mopa Abejaso. Dana Moa Ed, Ma and Muediani Nina. FD, I did a Jedi and Kratu Yatu. Anti cavity, dumb protection, brighter teeth, and fresh bread. I'm off at Missy Way. Prepatch your banter, man. Much as it. That's a cycle. It's a smile, your fresh breath. Me, GD said we used to kill 360 toothpaste. Some of the kind. Kill 360 toothpaste. Press here. Kill 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Only Jim Kazan Kazan Kazan. 
Akine Hosei, characteristic deep dead the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. And you will see so feeling to come when you know, yeah. Cal 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Cal 360 toothpaste, anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kel, happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. This is a call to you. The dreamers. The ones that see no boundaries. Dream. The explorers that chart their own path. Unlock the vibes, connect the energy. The ones that dare to challenge the status quo. Get connected, feel the When others try to think outside the box, you wonder what box. Catch the wave, enjoy the ride. To the architects of their journeys. Every connection is an opportunity to explore every experience. This is your call to adventure. Your journey begins here. Be bold, be daring, be free. Connecting passions, connecting dreams, connecting ambitions. Telesel, connecting energies. Customer, customer. Ah, Tangana. Tangana cities. No, no, dear. Tangana cities. 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 No, dear. Tangana one of our daily lucky winners Dial star 946 hash to play now Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority In today's modern world Stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses, and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, the elevator people. Delicious, creamy, and always on point. This advert is FDA approved. Hey, what's up? How far your intentions? To be honest, I'm so nervous about starting this new world on Monday. Oh, please. I know you'll be great at it. You should be worried about what benefits they have. Example, do they have health insurance? I doubt they will have that for internet. So, no shaking. I have NHIs already. Actually, I'm still not lying. Tin, tin, tin. Tina, look at you. What are you going to do in your office when you can just download your app to register for an NHIS membership? Yes, my people. You heard right. You can now download and register your membership on my NHIS app. No long queues or tedious paperwork. 
all you need is your Ghana card to register for yourself and for others. Once you register, you get a new digital NHIS card on your phone. My NHIS app gives you access to credentialed health facilities and services across the country. NHIS covers over 95% of disease conditions in Ghana. Access to healthcare just got easier. Now let me sign up quickly. Miss Seth, I'm starting work next month. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Yeah, what me? Betway starts strong with your phone too, with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm not food now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you want to see. Subscribers have been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. Welcome home. Mama, Papa is working. Bar Habal Hospital. Specialists. In every kind of wound disease. Bar Herbal Hospital. Hey, baby, I said you will be here. And so, you are getting me supper and you don't pay me. Spinal cord, swollen of the arms, arthritis, bone injury, swollen of the leg, with reddish color around it, and so on. See, Bar Herbal Hospital has special ultra modern machine for checking up the body. I have tried them and I got good results. Try Bar Habat Hospital. <laughs> car center in Ghana offering unparalleled round-the-clock service in autos and accessories Nadam Autofix is the biggest distributors of used ties in Ghana offering first grade second-hand car ties of all rim sizes at both wholesale and retail prices we are also the leading name in car sensor diagnostics, corrections and sales of car accessories. We excel in car washing and detailing with state-of-the-art steam engine washing machines that keep water away from your engine, ensuring a clean, healthy and responsive engine. Nadam Autofix, the first name in servicing, car accessories and car washing. Visit us today and experience the world of class difference. Find us today at Asori Daho, directly opposite Dansoman KFC and the Shell Filling Station. For more details, you can call us on 0503-244-266 or 0535-339823. Nado Moto Fix. Wukwainsunyonko Papapa. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV with me on the show this morning. I have Eric Amwa Kuchum, who's um, a government spokesperson and also part of the Baumia 2024 uh, campaign team. Good morning. Good morning, Randy. Right. Also with me on the show this morning is the Member of Parliament for the Bungu Constituency. He's also a member of the Energy Committee in uh, 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 Parliament. Okay. Uh, Edward. Abambiri Bawa is the Honorable Member of Parliament with us here on the show. Good morning, Eddie. Right. So, are you thinking of getting a toothpaste that will take care of all the family and save you money? Especially in these difficult times. The recommended family toothpaste is Kel 360 toothpaste. It's approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Kel 360 toothpaste provides you and your family with all-around dental protection throughout the day with freshness. 
Kel 360 toothpaste is good for kids, children, and adults. Let your family be a proud family when they step out by constantly using Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste brightens your teeth, prevents cavity, and with its cool mint, gives you fresh breath throughout the day and protects the gum from decaying. For consistency and quality, use Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste is another product from Samara Company Limited, producers of Sasso. It's available in all supermarkets, malls, and provision shops. Call Samara Company on 0246 864 798. Kel 360 toothpaste, happy smile. And the pains of climbing the stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all, irrespective of your age. But you need not worry anymore because lift and elevators have got you covered with the best portable american pneumatic vacuum elevators on the market today it's a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices and guess what it can lift your goods too wheelchairs can fit in and they come in three custom-made models it's affordable and can be installed within three days visit lift and elevators at sakumono or just call them on 0200 or send a mail to elevatorsgh at gmail.com for consultations and the best solutions in easy vertical movement. All right. Okay, so we'll start off with a story. Edward, former Maslock CEO jailed 10 years in absentia. Head of operations gets five years. And Malik Suleiman reports that Accra High Court yesterday sentenced the former chief executive officer of the microfinance and small loan center, Maslok. Miss Sedina Christine Tamaklu Ationu, to, she's Mrs., no Miss, to 10 years in prison for stealing, procurement breaches, and causing 90 million Ghana cities financial loss to the state. Mrs. Atiyonu was sentenced in absentia by Justice Efia Sewa Asarebuchi, a court of appeal judge sitting with additional responsibility as a high court judge. Mrs. Atiyonu is currently in the United States of America where she had traveled to seek medical treatment in 2022. Her co-accused and head of operations at Maslok, Daniel Axim, was under a five-year prison term. Justice Buchi ordered the convicts to refund the monies they stole from the state. Mrs. Atiyonu and Mr. Axim had been facing trial for the past five years. For conspiracy to steal, stealing, causing financial loss to the state, causing loss to public property and improper payment of public funds. The two were also accused of unauthorized commitment resulting in financial obligations for the government, money laundry and contravention of the Public Procurement Act pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Okay, now... Um, The prosecution has accused Mrs. Atiyonu of engaging in illegalities leading to the alleged stealing and financial uh, laws. She was accused of embezzling 500,000 cities. That was paid by a company which benefited from Maslow's support in 2014. It's also the case of a prosecution that in 2013, following a fire disaster at Katamanto Market in Accra, then President John Mama directed Maslow to provide assistance of 1.46 million to victims of a disaster. But Mrs. Atiyonu allegedly embezzled part of the uh, money. And the... Um, Attorney General, I believe, has been uh, speaking, the Deputy Attorney General. So that's uh, Afetu Ayubua. He's disclosed that the government is working hard to ensure that the former Maslok CEO is extra extradited to Ghana to serve a 10 year jail term. Um, okay. Now, he's commended the decision, particularly highlighting the assurance that she'll be brought back to the country to serve a sentence. Quote, good news, but what is refreshing is that she'll be brought down to face the sentence. No problem. <laughs> at all. Uh, he elaborated on the implications of the judgment, emphasizing its role in expediting justice, and he reiterated Ghana's legal framework for extraditing individuals from abroad to face legal consequences domestically. He says, we've started a process, but with this judgment, it's going to speed up the process. You know, in Ghana, we have various laws. You can choose to stay away, but so far as we have laws for which you can, uh, you can extract from other countries to Ghana, in case there's a judgment against you like this one, be rest assured that you'll be brought down to face judgment. All right. So that's it. Uh, Eddie? Yeah, thank mm. you very much. Mm. Good morning to your viewers. Mm. Um, yesterday, so when I heard a story, yeah. uh, I was initially a bit shocked because 
I knew that uh, she was out of the country. Um, but generally, if you look at our my my posture on this is that look, anybody who agrees to serve in the public sector and to take up a job within the state should also avail himself or herself to accountability because you are given the opportunity to serve the people within the framework of the law. And so if there's any infraction within the law, it is only fair and proper that you are made to account for that. But in doing those things, you also need to ensure that the person is also given the opportunity, the fair opportunity to be able to defend himself or herself. Because sometimes we have situations where a lot of things are said, and at the end of the day, they may not turn out to be right. And so that is the reason why there's always the, the issue of natural justice that gives you. My understanding of a said man's case, particularly with the mass lock issue, had to do with the fact that when the trial started, at one point or the other, he, he shot on, so she, she asked for permission to go for health uh, or treatment in, outside 2020, the, in 22, outside the country. And obviously, the court granted him, it granted her to go. That is why she was able to go out of the country. Because as we usually, even with very simple, simple cases, I remember the Mama Yarga's case, even they had to take her court and other things. So the court realized that there were, there were reasonable grounds for her to go out of the country to go and uh, seek further treatment. My understanding is also that when she got there, her condition got worsened. And therefore, uh, they, they came back, the, her lawyers came back and then gave out evidence to suggest that, look, this lady is out there, but her condition is not improving. And therefore, there was a need for her to also come and have a day in court. I think the judge decided to ignore that. The, what do you call it? The, the lawyers decided to appeal on those things. And while these uh, appeals were on, and had not been really been concluded, been heard and concluded, the judge has gone further to now sentence her to 10 years imprisonment. I think that, look, for somebody who did not go out of the country, and I, you know there's a, a typical case also, the one with uh, uh, the minority leader. You know, there's a, yes. a chief, yes, who, the person who also went to India. There was this person who also went to India. Mm. And then um, even at one point, it was a wife who had to do a, 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 a what do you call it, a video, a, what do you call it, a communication with the court mm. to show that the husband was even in, in, in the theater while they were doing those things. Mm. And then the Attorney General's Department decided that, look, we're not going to proceed on that issue. So you see that there's some level of uh, resemblance in terms of the situation. But the, the, what do you call it? The, the court has finally said that, look, the lady should go 10 years. I am told that the lawyers of the lady have decided to appeal that case. So it means that there's still an opportunity to deal with that. But Randy, what I find a bit interesting. So it means that it means that she didn't um, she didn't um, open her defense. No, she didn't. She didn't open her defense. She didn't open her defense. And so she did. did uh, the court did not have the opportunity to hear her side of the story because of health grounds. And the court went ahead to to to, to pass a judgment on on. It. But Randy, I was just saying that alacrity with which. Uh, the Attorney General, and for that matter, the state was interested in dealing with this particular case. I felt that the same issues could have been dealt with, with other issues. I say this because, look, one of the things we must hold our leaders to, and I believe that that's one of the reasons why uh, the current flag bearer of the NDC has insisted that, look, in as much as when I come into government, given the opportunity, I will pursue former appointees who may have uh, offended the law. I will also ensure that within my own government, I deal with them. And in fact, he was not only saying, but he has evidence. There's evidence of him doing that. The issue of Abu Pele's case. He had to, Abu Pele, everybody who knows Abu Pele and the former president, they were very close friends because they've known each other for many years. But he still went ahead and asked the Attorney General to prosecute uh, his own friend. 
because he felt that there were some infractions that were occasioned as a result of his leadership as at the end, uh, Jida or what was it, YEA, whatever you call it. So I felt that, look, whilst they were so interested in getting this case done with, and I, I think that the court processes would go to because the woman has a right to appeal, there are other cases that the Attorney General should have been interested in. But unfortunately, it appears, depending on the type of color you, you, appear, you, you are, uh, the, the laws seem not to be working. Typical example, I, in my sector that I have operated on very much, and this was a case I followed very seriously, I wrote a lot of articles on, the issue of the, the scandal in, at Bost. With my colleague who currently now is in Parliament, we had situations where when even the minister decided to set up a committee to investigate this, while the minister was integrating the group and trying to see how they would investigate the details of all the things that had come out, because there were documents suggesting that there was something wrong done at Boston. You had the president come out to indicate that, uh, look, um, a DNI rep uh, 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 report came out exonerating the gentleman, when the facts on the ground did not reflect that. You had the issue of Dr. Anya and then uh, the two deputy chiefs of staff who are now what do you call it? Ministers of State. And the scandal that came in it, suddenly we heard that they had referred the thing to, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the police, CID. A report came exonerating them, even though they were, uh, what do you call it, tape rec uh, recordings of the then CID director, who is, who is now the Yoko boss. Indicated, telling them that, look, you all belong to the same party, find a way of handling these issues. So somebody who was supposed to be investigating this was advising the complainant on issues like this. So it gives you a very clear indication that this is a government that is not really interested in trying to deal with corruption as it is. But just they use uh, the, uh, the, the tool that they have, which is the, the, the right and the power to prosecute, to go after their political opponents. But of course... For me, I, I do not, on the basis of that, said now will definitely at one point or the other have an opportunity to uh, demonstrate why she felt that, look, she was not properly treated at the high court. She was not given a chance to defend herself just like any other person because she needed to have a day in court. But that did never happened. But, Randy, the, the, I just could, hope and pray. Could it be that <coughs> the, the judge <coughs> did not believe the medical reports that were brought to the courts by the by her lawyers. I mean, subsequent to being granted a permission to travel, for which reason she she allowed for the trial to continue. Yeah. So uh, let's grant it that even that was the case. You see, if you look at the stories that have been made, is it consistently they talk about she has absconded, and that's why they even, there's even a contemplation of repatriation because of the whole mentality that she had absconded. If the judge herself did not believe that she was sick, there was no way she was going to give her the opportunity to go out of the country. Now, the people tell you that they bring evidence to you. Yes, maybe you can place, you look at the, you place judgment on, a judgment value on those pieces of evidence that they've brought to you and make a, a judgment call that, look, I think I don't believe in this. But I believe that this will then fall within the, the remit of the, her lawyers. The lawyers will definitely will have to argue that in the appellate court to suggest as to why they felt that she was she was not properly treated she was not given the opportunity to uh, defend herself because it's so weird that you accuse me i am not around to defend myself and the judgment is passed on me and particularly i'm not around because you had permitted me to go out of the country to have some treatment and you think that suddenly uh, i have become so well that i should be back for the treatment and and i'm not there so on the basis of that you are you are you are, you are sentencing me. But I just think that the state should still equally be interested in other issues, even more scandalous ones. Because if you look at the figures that have been mentioned here, and you compare to figures, today you have people who were involved in serious scandals like uh, the Australian visa scandal. The people are not only, they, not only did they not, uh, what do you call it, um, prosecute them, but they ended up rewarding them with appointments. You have situations like this. And so when you see that depending on the situation, the attitude of the state 
to exercise its right of prosecution is different. That is not good for our democracy. And for me, particularly with this issue, uh, I have a funny feeling that it is also an opportunity to divert the attention of Ghanaians from the hardship that people are going through, not because of the fact that uh, they have, they, the factors that caused that were not, were, were not things that were known. These were factors that, to a very large extent, were caused by even the managers of the economy, corruption, and other things. And so, Randy, we, mm. we just hope and pray that her lawyers will have the opportunity to deal with these issues uh, in the appellate court, and then uh, she will have her day properly in court. Mm. Yes, Eric, let me bring in. Well, Randy, I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I feel that we've done pretty well as um, a democracy. And for me, sometimes I struggle to understand how we pick and choose certain aspects of the tenets of democracy that we want to uh, practice. Yes, I can understand the fact that if somebody is close to you or you're part of a group and one of you finds themselves in, in some kind of border, uh, you find all sorts of ways to try and probably neutralize the situation and bring all manner of conversations into the matter. The good, the good thing is that, I mean, the processes have not been exhausted. Uh, as he said, I mean, there's always a right to appeal. However, when you find yourself in public service, uh, some of these things are things that are probably bound to happen. And that's the reason why we as a people have agreed that we want to go by these democratic tenants. I mean, you have your day in court. There's a fundamental principle of the natural justice and all of those things. I will not be able to tell you how the judge arrived at the fact that she's sick or she's not sick and all of those things. And these are things that, as far as I'm concerned, are more to do with the, uh, the legal regime that we have as a country than you know. and For anybody to suggest that there is some kind of, if you like, um, persecution involved and that there are other cases that are probably more scandalous that needs to be looked at. Uh, for me, it's neither here nor there, because at the end of the day, uh, the same constitution actually gives the right to the attorney general to be able to determine which cases he wants to pursue or not. Of course, if you want to come to the table with principles and equity and all, then maybe you can have those conversations. But I, I feel that some of these conversations should also be leveraged on the kind of public administration system that we, we run and the systems that we put in place to ensure that persons that have been given these opportunities to serve in the public sector do not find themselves in situations where it becomes very clear that some financial loss has actually been uh, made uh, and the, the, the state is actually losing in that, in that regard. Now, I believe strongly that when you have these conversations around corruption in the public sector and what has happened in the past, I mean, I remember very well that I think it was Ghana 50 or so, the likes of Reku Bobe and uh, Kojong Pianim and everything, for almost 80 years under the NDC administration, uh, uh, what's his name, Asabi and his wife and all that, were taken through this process, of AJ and all of those things. And when the process is finished, it turned out that the court actually found that they were not culpable. So there are, there are clear evidence of these things happening within the political landscape. Of course, when something happens and people are unduly impacted or there's a clear sign of bias or persecution, I think everybody will speak against it. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, um, this has happened. Uh, we have to go through the process. We allow the uh, due process to uh, continue so that we can, as a people, even use it as a, a test case. I mean, usually my perspective on these conversations is that, yes, it's good. You go through the process is prosecuted and all of those things and there's a jail sentence and all of those things. Then after that, what next? You know what I'm saying? So what it means is that even within the public uh, sector landscape, we need to find ways to ensure that issues to do with uh, financial loss to the state, uh, value for money conversations, 
procurement practices and breaches and all of those things are things that we cannot come and sit here in, an, in another 10 years period and be talking about the same things, especially when you can use best practices. And we all know where these things happen. I've had occasions to even agree with people who have asked that we need to be able to tighten our asset declaration laws to start with. Because truly, there are some people who, for one reason or the other, probably will not even find themselves being taken to court or even going through this process. However, there are the assets that they, they, they had prior to entering public service probably were not even determined. And nobody knew exactly what it was. And we probably have, over the period, as a democracy, paid lift service to some of these things. So there are practical considerations that you have to put in place to ensure that these things happen. Now, our commitment to fighting corruption, the president, before he became uh, commander-in-chief of, of this country, said that, listen, we needed to find a way of having a special purpose vehicle. And that's the reason why we even decided to have the office of the special prosecutor. And it cannot be the case that my, my good friend, Honorable here, does not know the kind of uh, cases that the office of special prosecutor has actually undertaken. Even people within the government circles have been investigated. Some the outcomes have gone. Some of these processes are still in court. Right? So it's not very, if you like, um, fair or even clear in my mind as to how he can arrive at these uh, conversations that uh, there's no commitment to fight corruption. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm sure every Ghanaian listening or watching would appreciate the fact that there's still a lot more to be done in that particular space to ensure that persons that are given these opportunities do not uh, abuse the system and are actually there and their stewardship is to basically ensure that the development of this country is what is of paramount interest. Mm. Otherwise, we can see <clears throat> the politics because he can mention all the persons that he believes that some scandal or another requires that they go through a certain process. Like he even said himself, sometimes you hear all of these things, but these persons would also would have to have uh, their day in court or even an opportunity to uh, prove to everybody that they are innocent. Otherwise, what will happen as well is that we would have this uh, uh, public prosecution, I mean, a court of public opinion, and say that, oh, this person has done A, this person has done B, when in actual fact they probably haven't. Or even persons that really should be looked at are uh, not looked at because, I mean, there's all these uh, public persecution out there. And I believe strongly that even as bad as you can uh, claim any democracy is. Once you have a system in place where you have these tenants of going through a proper legal regime, you can find solutions to some of these things. You can actually even mitigate some of the challenges as they come along through a proper legal regime, right? And like I say, crime does no, that, that doesn't have any uh, time span. So if you feel that somebody has done something untold or that person needs to be brought to book, it doesn't matter how long it takes. That's, those persons would be brought to book. But as far as I'm concerned, it's important that we have this conversation situated within the context of how we have agreed as a people to be governed by. Otherwise, then it becomes almost as if that we are expedient in our uh, uh, disposition, in our, even in our countenance, and even in principle. Because in one breath, you feel that, oh, you mentioned all of these persons that you feel that have done something that is more scandalous than what has happened now. And they, as far as because even by your public commentary, actually means that they are guilty. However, when another one goes through a certain process, you start questioning the, uh, uh, that particular process because maybe that persons are aligned to you or you're in a particular group together. And I don't think that that is situated in, uh, or it's anchored in, in principle. Mm. But Randy, just yes. a quick one then. You see, um, yes, I agree with him that the discretionary powers to prosecute falls within the Attorney General, and therefore he has the right to exercise it. But the Constitution also gives limits and boundaries as to how discretionary powers are exercised. That it shouldn't be exercised in a very capricious manner. Now, so if you have a situation where because of the fact that you have the discretion to do something, and part of it is to also ensure that you have justice being done, at all times. 
you must you must make sure that the optics in itself will give confidence to people that look you are really making sure that everybody is equal before the law i have just indicated very clearly that in most of these cases look there were reports the example i just gave the issue of let's even use you, you talked about uh, the special prosecutor the issue of cecilia dapa today as we speak we don't even know where this issue is because there was clear evidence of huge sums of money that were outside the banking system that were in her house it was only fair that the state gets to know where these monies are coming from if i were to ask you eric as to do you know the status of this case because after wasting the country's time for god knows how many months the what do you call it the special prosecutor says that on the basis of this this thing looks like money laundering and it doesn't fall within my remit and therefore yoko should take over since then have you heard anything nothing and so i'm just trying to make the point that you 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 must be seen to be fa- look the 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 the, the, the the quest by Ghanaians that the state must be seen to be fighting corruption is something that is a, it's a, it's a, it's a call that everybody should embrace. I have nothing wrong with the fact that the uh, Attorney General took the decision to prosecute Sednam and her colleagues. My point I'm just making is that even in that, that you should be seen to be this eager for all other corruption cases. The issue of uh, the visa, the visa uh, scandal. Beyond just the fact that these were persons who were brought back from Australia, there was a report, there was an inquiry, there was a report that really indicted the gentleman. What happened? That was pushed under the bed. And I'm saying that beyond just that, the person was rewarded. That's the optics I'm talking about. You have a, a, a situation where uh, the, uh, you have the two former deputy chiefs of staff who are now ministers of state, who are members of cabinet, that when now the Yoko... Uh, boss, who was also appointed by the then was the director for CIA, is head on tip advising the person who was actually pursuing this issue. That look, you all belong to the same party, and so bringing this case here, will, you can solve this thing within yourself. Then you have situations like this, and Ghanaians are saying, Look, and Ghanaians are not, they are not stupid. They know that, look, there is a cherry picking activity. That is being done by particularly with the, with the attorney general and for that matter this government and almost every corruption case that has come anytime there's a system put in place to ensure that these people are really taking through the, the due process you have the presidency truncating that with a statement or by saying that we have investigated what investigative powers that does, does the, uh, uh, the president have that is why the state in this in its own wisdom felt that beyond just the fact that you have the executive powers, that certain powers should be assigned to state institutions to be able to, because they have the capacity, they have the people to be able to investigate this. Anytime those processes have been done, it is always truncated. So Eric, I agree with you. For me, I am not to a very large extent because these people have not actually been put through the due process to know whether they are guilty or not. But we have a, a situation where the chief executive of the country, the president of the country, Truncates these processes. Meanwhile, when it comes to another set of group uh, of people, you see the, the eagerness and the, the, the willingness to go to court. And even when there are situations, you see, look, my brother, I am just making this point to you that look, when you say that look, these people, there's no status of limitation when it comes to crime. So, on the basis of that, these people uh, do at one day, assuming that they had actually uh, uh, committed crimes against the state, they would definitely pay for it. We should, we, should be, we should be targeting situations where governments can do themselves in as much as they, they can prosecute former, uh, what do you call it, uh, appointees, can look within themselves and say, look, I have appointee A, B, and C who are not operating within the confines of the law and therefore they should be subjected to uh, what you call prosecution and let them be given the opportunity to defend themselves. And that's why I gave you an example of uh, Abu Ghabi. Abu Ghabel, anybody who knows Abu Ghabel, he was in parliament with the former president. They have him close from the, from the north. But by virtue of the fact that he had committed, in his uh, uh, estimation, committed some infractions, what he needed to do was that he subjected the, the man to the process. And he was eventually jailed. So this is what we want to see. So that people can have confidence that the, the people we appoint into office are, are determined to protect the public, public space. They are determined to make uh, the, the playing field level for everybody. Ah, yesterday, just, just look at yesterday. For a very serious government, yesterday when the nurses were demonstrating, 
This is something everybody knows. And Randy, as me, as a, a member of parliament, I've had situations where my constituents have come to me asking me for money because they have been asked to pay money to be employed into the public sector. Yesterday, the nurses were indicating that some of them had paid as much as 10,000 Ghana cities. I know for a fact there are individuals who go paying 20,000 Ghana, uh, 20, Ghana cities just to go into, into the security services. In a situation where the constitution says that people should be given the fair uh, what call it, opportunity to be hired, why is government not interested in investigating these things? Why is government not interested in investigating all this? Look at government. There was a whole story about how people were paying to, to be hired into the local government service. Nobody say anything about this. And you are telling me that this is a government who is ready, who is ready to fight corruption. And on the basis of that, he says, that, look, this person has... Yes, they have... Assuming that those issues that they had raised about said now are true. For me, that is not right. If assuming that they are true, that is not right. But the person must be given the opportunity to defend himself and uh, herself. And if the court itself was, uh, was the body that permitted her to go out of the country to have treatment. And if she says that, look, based on the, even the documents and other things I've brought from my doctors, I think that my condition is becoming worse. Please, you can do. Just you said, there's no status of uh, what they call limitation when it comes to crime. Give the person the opportunity to come back. You can have an independent, I've not, maybe it is part of, it will be part of a judgment. I've not seen any independent report contrary to what the lawyers have presented. She may have been making her judgment call that, look, based on the evidence that I've given to me, I do not think that this lady is, her condition is worse. And therefore, on the strength of that, she has a right to defend herself or not. So if she decides not to come to court, I can make a ruling. Yes, yeah, she can make that. That is within her right. But I'm just saying that whilst you do those things, whilst you do those, be seen to be doing the same thing with the things that we are even experiencing now. You are going to IMF for $3 billion. And on the basis of that, there are a lot of things you do not want to do as a country to exercise your sovereignty, that you are a leader. But at the same time, you have issues like huge sums of money, millions, in people's rooms. And you are not interested in that. Okay. And you have the, uh, what do you call the special prosecutor lamenting. Why? A mother who organized the press conference. She, he was on air after that press conference. Do you know he has gone silent? Mm. After that press conference, the first thing they did was to bring out her, his request for what they call it, procurement of vehicles. Mm. And silenced him. And silenced him. Since then, have you heard anything? The last time I heard about him was when the issue of the scholarship, scholarship uh, secretary issue came in. He said, that, oh, they were also working with the scholarship. If you're working with the scholarship secretary, why didn't you bring it out? You waited for a journalist to bring these things out. Mm. All right. M maybe we need to move on. Um, you, 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 Edward, I've just seen a story here. A coup virus government renaming of a Mary plant a fraudulent <coughs> move. A minority. And I think you are speaking on behalf of a caucus. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying that you will investigate the 38 million US dollars cost of relocating the power plant to Kumasi if you win the 2024 polls. <coughs> and the VR in a recent Facebook post announced the commission of a Kumasi one -tema. Is it today? So the, the, the commission, the, is it the, today? Uh, uh, that's a technical commission. Today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now... You said that although the relocation cost was initially estimated at $24 million, the figure increased to $38 million. And uh, you described the recommissioning as a fraudulent move by the government, intimating that the opposition is trying to expose it. Quote, you may say, oh, nomenclature, what is the significance of nomenclature to us? You can say that. There is a political connotation to it. Ashanti region has been one area that constantly have said they have not done anything for them. They are projecting this animal called Amari, which they themselves condemned. They are now sending it to Kumasi, called Kumasi One Thermal Power Plant, and it will look new in the eyes of the people. That is fraud, and that is the part that we are trying to expose. Yeah, so, uh, Randy, you know that Ameri has been, um, or the Ameri project has Meanwhile, been... Meanwhile, I, I, okay. I saw something, let me just... Uh, on the front page of a new crusading guide... Um, it's a story attributed to uh, Kojun Safwapuku, who is the chair of the Energy Committee of the Dr. Baumia Manifesto Committee. This is why gas turbines' name must change. Ameri in Ghana stands for fraud, rent-seeking, and corruption. And uh, he says that uh, uh, this is one reason that... Uh, uh, the name must change because <laughs> any, the name Ameri 
in his view, represents uh, fraud, rent seeking, and corruption. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so thank you very much, Randy. You see, and, uh, this part that you just read, I just laughed because I recall when, um, when the renegotiated Ameri deal came to parliament. Mm-hmm. Then Kojo, uh, Kojo Poko was then with the civil society. Mm-hmm. I worked with him closely to oppose this, to oppose the renegotiation. Okay. So today, because he is not a chairman of the subcommittee on energy for Bambia, his language has changed. That being said, look, uh, Randy, the Ameri project itself, and I have had occasion to write about two or three articles on it, has been a, a project that was misunderstood by Ghanaians, and particularly there were certain people who deliberately decided to present the facts in a way that made it look so terrible. The Mary deal came during the challenges that we had within the uh, se- sector in terms of power. Now, if you look at the various arrangements that are made in procuring independent power producers to come into the country, um, you could have an emergency power plant. So that one is just for a specific period, just to resolve an issue, and then the plant goes back. You could have a normal PPA, a private sector plant that comes, and therefore they always have a tenure of about 15 or 20 years, depending on the lifespan of what they call it, the plant. You could have a BOT that you build, you operate, you own, you operate, and you transfer. Usually that one is a short-term plan. That says, look, I do not have the money to do it, but meanwhile I want to have this plan to myself. Come and build it, operate it, and when you recover, when, when you recover your cost, and then with a reasonable margin of what a reasonable margin in terms of profits, then you will uh, you will pack out and I take up the plant and it becomes my property. So this the Ameri fell within that particular that particular sector. People said it was expensive, and just as uh, Kujopoku said that it involved rent seeking and what have you. On the basis of that, the president then, President John Mahama, decided to hire the services of Price Waterhouse Coopers to do an audit on the Ameri deal. So it was more like when people started talking about it, he just said, oh, no, we, we, we are convinced about our figures, and therefore that was it. He decided to have an independent auditor to look at this. And Randy, maybe later on I'll share the report with I think I have the report now. So I'll share the report with you. And it's, it's interesting reading. They compared Ameri with a number of factors. First, they looked at the composite generation tariff. So if you say it's expensive, so I'll look at the tariff, because usually it's the tariff, is the various tariffs within the, the agreement that will let them know whether the plant is expensive or is not expensive. So they looked at the composite uh, generation tariff. America's composite generation tariff was 14.59 kilowatt hour. They compared it to existing, and, uh, existing PPAs, nine existing PPAs, and took an average of that. The average of the nine existing PPAs was 14.9 kilowatts hours. So if you took Ameri and you compared it to nine other PPAs that we had in the country as a result of independent power producers, Ameri was still cheaper. Then they looked at the capacity tariff, and in the terms of the capacity tariff, it was the lowest, 5.5. 5.5 per kilowatt hour. That was what it was the lowest. Then when it came to installed cost per kilowatt, so the kilowatt is supposed to be, say, 100. It's going to cost us $200 million, uh, $2 million to put up the 100 million, 100 edition. So you do a per capita, and no, the unit, unit per, per kilowatt hour. When, and you see, that was the part that was interesting. When they did that, among nine, uh, what do you call it? Uh, IPP. comp- IPPs. Mm-hmm. They were the lowest. And you know why? This was the issue. You know that Ameri was just for five years. But they have the right to recover their, their, their investment. So capital recovery, they need to be able to do that. Usually for an ordinary plant, it is for 20 years. So their, their capital recovery is longer. So to be able to do the comparison, if you just take a Ameri for five years, and you take, a, what do you call it, say a typical plant like Asogli for 20 years, that will not be proper, uh, what do you call it, calculation. Yeah. Because there's a front load of the cap, uh, capital recovery over that. So what you normally would do, you will levelize that, the period. So instead of the five years that 
Amer was supposed to recover its cost. You will levelize, levelize it to 20 years to so that you can compare like to like. When they did that, Amer was the cheapest. Amer was the cheapest. Meanwhile, you had situations where people went and bastardized this. Fast forward. We come back. NDC loses. And as part of the campaign, the, uh, the MVP had indicated that when they come, they were going to, uh, what do you call it, investigate this particular plan, uh, uh, this deal. They come in. They start the negotiations. They start hitting what And we're monitoring the situation. But then I had just gone into parliament. And so we're monitoring the situation as to the negotiation. They realized that there was nothing wrong with it. Then quickly, from nowhere, they said, look, there was going to be... The first attempt was the Katie Hammond issue that was saying that there was a fraudulent present, a representation of the facts. And so on the basis of that, there should be a motion for rescission so that they will take that up. That didn't, that didn't work. Then they came with the renegotiation of the deal. I recall this very, much, uh, very well because the day they brought the, the document was the same day Emisata was going to be buried. So... <laughs> We were at the uh, conference center when we heard that they were holding the meeting. I remember I virtually had to run from that place to the meeting to say, ah, why, are you, why are you smuggling to take this meeting? Because they knew that most of the NDC MPs would be at the funeral grounds. Mm. So I had to run to go there to go and deal with it. So when they came, we saw that not only was the renegotiation more expensive than the original contract, they had extended the tenure. To, uh, to six years instead of five years. That was under this Metelenos group that mm -hmm. came and did. That's how Boache Jaco lost his job. And I had indicated very clearly that Boache Jaco alone should not have been the person losing this job. Because look, he didn't just come with the document straight from Ministry of Energy. It had an executive approval. You know, usually there are two ways that you can have the approval. You can have cabinet approval or you can have an executive approval. There was an executive approval attached to the, 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 the renegotiated deal that was brought to parliament, which was signed by Sentibi Dietu. So my question is, if the president in his own wisdom felt that what the, uh, Minister Jaco uh, yeah, did was wrong, then it meant that, and he was firing him, his executive secretary, who actually signed that document, did not have any business being in that office again. I felt that the two of them should have gone. Signed on behalf of the president. Yeah, but if he signed on behalf of the president, so I would assume, I would have assumed that the reason why he was firing Mr. Jaco, you see, the, why we take documents to cabinet or ask for seek uh, executive approval is that, look, I work in your person because you have the executive power. I work in your person. And so I bring it to you and say, look, these are the deals, these are the facts. Look at them. If you are okay with the facts, let me take it to parliament, to the other uh, arm of government to approve it. So by virtue of the fact that you utter a letter indicating that you have no problem with it, and the problem then, it then becomes a problem. You don't fire the minister for doing that. Are you getting the point? Yeah. So my assumption is that maybe the president himself even didn't know that this letter, because we have a situation where sometimes you have the executive secretary signing letters and the president coming to apologize. Remember the letter with uh, Babin when uh, we talked about the amount of money that was given to the allocation, budget, uh, budget allocation for parliament and the judiciary, and as Antibi Dietu uttered the letter. You remember that uh, one, the majority leader came, apologized on behalf of the president. The president himself wrote an official letter to the uh, speaker, apologizing, indicating that, look, these were things that were done, not necessarily with his uh, explicit uh, approval. So I'm just making the point, I'm assuming that this executive uh, approval was procured without the knowledge of the president. Or else, if it was with the knowledge of the president, the Jaku should have, shouldn't have been fired. They should have been a collective responsibility for that. If it was not with his approval, and therefore uh, Jaku was fired, then Asante Bidietu should have gone. That is just my simple logic that I'm just trying to make in this case. So then that uh, went. Then later on, we came to realize that they said they wanted to relocate the, this plan to Kwasi. Look, have nothing wrong with, uh, uh, nothing against the relocation of America. Technically, it makes a lot of sense. You go to Kumasi and its environs, and you see that the quality of voltage that they have is very bad. The middle belt. The middle belt. So to move some of our plants there makes a lot of sense. Then it improves the voltage level. It helps people to save their gadgets. It helps businesses to run. So technically, it does not, there's no problem with it. The problem we had had to do with the relocation and the contracts that came with it. First and foremost, this was a major project you were trying to do. You decided to sole source. Mm -hmm. You decided to sole source. 
And the contract, initial contract sum was around $24 million. Then suddenly, we got to hear that. And this was not by he, rumor. It was when we met Viare at uh, Oak Plaza Hotel that we asked Viare. We said, look, we knew that this contract was supposed to be $24 million. That was the first thing we heard. And that was also, guess which company was involved in that? In the Asia? Which company? Metalionis. The same Metalionis. Oh. There were the same people who were So we asked this was the case. How come the team moved to 38? Mm -hmm. The then deputy chief, uh, chief executive of VR said, look, indeed, they do not know because this is being handled by the ministry. However, they have indicated to the ministry that they have the capacity to relocate this plant. They, they have in-house capacity. They VR. VR. Because you remember that the BOT had ended. And because the BOT had ended, it they was, had handed over to the state and the state it had was now our property. Of our property. So they had the capacity to do that. As we speak now, we do not know the details as to how this plant was uh, uh, relocated. What were the contracts on it? What were the details of it? And this is part of the reason why I said that it is one area that we are committed to investigating. Just to be sure that we are not saying there's anything uh, done wrongly. But beyond that conversation, we never got any other details until the thing was relocated. That's a fair, the other thing. Then you get to Kumasi. And suddenly, you know, you know who is a, the person who is called a neologist? Somebody who has a penchant for just renaming things without building it. The school what? A neologist. N-E-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. Okay, neologist. Now, neologist. Now, you have a situation, and that is typical of, uh, what do you call it, uh, Akufuado. Akufuado has this, this, uh, this tendency to, I use UDS. UDS that was put up by yet another president. You go on to say that you, you go and rename it. And all the renaming they do, apart from just even this Kumasi one, all the renaming they do, they rename them according to people, uh, from, uh, by people who are from their tradition. People who never contributed whether ideas or any other thing in building that particular, uh, in those, those national assets. So you go and then you suddenly say, I'm moving the thing from Ameri to K I A K one T P P. Then you have Kojo say that the name Ameri uh, represents rent seeking, represents corruption, and you speak this way without evidence. You just say it. And when particularly there was an independent audit that was conducted on this. Two, I still believe, and uh, I said this, and I'll continue to say it. I've heard people say that, oh, but why NDC is being so trivial? The most important thing is that the power is being sent to, to Kumasi. Name, what, what is the issue about name? No, there's a reason why people give names. There's a reason why people give names. And I have indicated that, look, the people of Ashanti region, the, the, this government wants to hoodwink them, and that's clear. You have a whole regional minister who has said for almost eight years, he's asked to just list five things that the government has done. After he himself had told somebody else to mention 10, they just okay, we are not going to ask you to mention 10. Just mention 5. And he's he just there. Uh, he suddenly, he became a stammerer. You have a minister, a, a cabinet minister from Ashanti region, who is asked to mention just 5 things that they think that the government has done in his region. And he's still struggling to mention. So, obviously, they know that when the day of accountability comes, and they want to meet the people of Ashanti region and tell them that, look, um, we, uh, what is it that we have done for you? They intend using the Ameri plant as one of the achievements in bringing to Ashanti region. The relocation of the plant we bring into Ashanti region. That is why we are saying that, look, yes, we have nothing against the name Kumasi, no. But we want to draw the attention of the people of Ashanti region. That all that these people are doing is this that they have just taken a property, moved it from one place to another, and renamed it, and trying to create the impression that it is theirs. That is what we want the people to know. So that's what I'm doing. Right. Hmm. I'm actually quite surprised that we are having this conversation, especially surrounding a name. Because even if you go back into the genesis of this conversation, and even where this name Amiri is coming from. I mean, what's Ameri itself? Ameri itself, really, um, in the larger scheme of things, it was basically like a middle man entity that was used to procure, I mean, 
stuff that we could have even done directly as a people. And at the time, you are the energy ministry. You're actually a spokesperson, and you understand exactly what I'm saying. Now, 10 years down the line or even more, even that the very basis for that agreement has actually changed. As we speak now, who owns those gas turbines? Those gas turbines are owned by the state. It's owned by Ghana. And even for the last period that this thing were being operated in Takrad, it was being operated by a totally different entity. And Ameri in itself was actually nowhere near this particular operationalization of this particular plant. And then it becomes very necessary that with the uh, increase in population and in terms of how densely populated the middle belt is, uh, we need to be able to find a way of democratizing how we distribute our energy and decide that we need to relocate this particular plant into the region so that it will serve the purpose of supporting the people within that middle belt. I mean, honestly speaking, sometimes I struggle to understand the rationale behind some of the conversations that we have. I mean, for me, maybe we could have even used this platform to have a more comprehensive discussion on what is the way forward for us as a, a people when it comes to our, our energy needs going into the future. And then you can, as a political party on the side of the NDC, say that, okay, this is what we feel that we should do to forestall some of the challenges that in the last 15, 20 years, nearly every two, three years, we, we seem to find ourselves with some kind of energy crisis. <laughs> then the people who will be watching us, who will be uh, listening to us, will think that, well, as, as two main political parties, we are being progressive, we are having, we are elevating the discourse, because as far as people are concerned, it doesn't matter what the name is, is Ameri, KT, this, that, that, as far as the ordinary folk is concerned, they want their lives on. And so then that would dovetail into what we as a political party, what even the MPP flag bearer is proposing to be his vision for the energy sector. And this is a guy who says that, yes, I mean, with all the challenges that we face with the, uh, the gas, the hydro, and all of those things, he believes that in the next chapter of this country, let's focus on solar and wind going into the renewable energy conversation. Then we'll say that, yes, I mean, it's doable. It's not doable. These are the pros and cons. This is how we'll be able to find the resources to invest in this space. And this is how it's going to support one uh, conversation around the, uh, the environment and making sure that when it comes to uh, the whole conversation about the uh, natural gas and all of these things that we all know that actually impact the environment negatively. Then even young people who will be listening to us, who are actually probably going to vote for the very first time, or here, who are even conscious about energy and the environment and how it would impact their futures, will think that we are doing something important as, a, as two major political parties. Otherwise, to be honest with you, if there are any challenges with either uh, the procurement that was involved and the processes that it took into arriving at who should do that and all that, as a member of parliament, and as a member of even the energy uh, committee, I'm sure that you can find ways of actually making sure that whoever is responsible for this is actually brought to parliament to bring clarity to the conversation. But because I'm sure that we are either in a because we are in the political season, it's almost as if that everything becomes further, political further, for us to overstretch and make it look like it's such a big. That's what I'm concerned. Everybody within the middle bed, Kumasi and all parts of the country, will be excited that, as we speak, a decision has been taken to at least improve the services that come to them. And for me, sometimes we need to probably bring the conversation to that, the bread and butter conversation. As to what we say, sometimes I think it's way above the heads of persons that are supposed to be benefiting from some of these why things. Would we I, want, why would we want a ceremony with the, presidents, the president in attendance yes. to do that? To do that. I mean, those are, those are I mean, for me, decisions that can, you can have issues but, with. But, but I, I, I'm I feel saying that, that because in terms of improvement in electricity supply, mm -hmm. whether it is Gridco or it is ECG, mm -hmm. they have projects 
across the country yes. that they do all the time yes. to improve electricity in different parts yes. of the country. Yes. Now, what is it about this one that we're going to have a function, we have seen the flyers, a function with the president in attendance to, to come and do that? Because we know that normally you have these things when there's some monumental uh, um, thing that is to be done. The, the grid co has done projects mm -hmm. even to, to um, help with ele ele um, uh, the, the distribution of electricity even to neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. We don't have those kinds of events. They, they do all these things all the time. So what is it about this one? Randy, I mean, for me, I think that we can, uh, there's nothing wrong with questioning the rationale, but there's also nothing wrong with the president, who is the uh, chief, exec I mean, the commander in chief, to say that, well, uh, this thing is happening in this part of the country, and I feel that I need to be able to interact with people of this country. The president can decide to go anywhere in this country and do whatever it is that he, 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 he wants in terms of making sure that people understand and appreciate whatever it is that he's doing in every sector, right? And this is not the first time that uh, something has been commissioned or something has been uh, given or projected, regardless of whatever you think about it. I might have my personal um, if you like, considerations when it comes to these things. But like I indicated, as far as the people are concerned, it doesn't matter if the president comes to commission or not, or is named this or that, they are most importantly interested in making sure that when they turn on, they deflect the switch, the lights come on. We can have this conversation about really is it necessary to give it uh, no, I ask that question in, because in, in, I ask that question because I get the impression that there is a certain pretense mm -hmm. about a political value, especially in, especially in an election year, mm -hmm. with something like this. Mm -hmm. Because one, if you own plants, mm -hmm. you own the plants, there was a BOT. You mm -hmm. even forget about whatever anybody said about it. Mm -hmm. You own a plant. The BOT said that after five years, it becomes yours. It's become your. You own it. You have 10 units of it. Mm -hmm. Each one is 25 megawatts. You decide that to improve electricity supply in the middle belt because we have a growing uh, consumption. I will take six out of these 10 and then go locate them somewhere else, somewhere else to improve um, electricity supply. That would be something routine to be done. So why would we, have, why would we want to have this fanfare with even a, read, a naming, a naming of it? It suggests that we, there, is, there, is, there is something, there is some, some value in renaming it, in making it a big issue, in having the president commission it. There must be some value. Otherwise, I have signed a contract. It's a beauty. The five years has lapsed. I own it. I've owned it. In fact, we've owned it from 20 what? I think 2019. Yes. So we've owned the thing for about five years. Since it was signed, we've owned it for about five years. They are there, 10 of them. We decide that we are going to pick six out of the 10 to go and fix in Ashanti region to improve electricity supply. That should be routine. That should be routine. No, but Randy, I think that you have every right to, I mean, to those views. But all I'm saying is that even when it comes to this whole conversation around what is called, <laughs> in reality, mm. I don't think that apart from those of us here, and a few people who are interested in the energy space, right? Anybody's really interested in what it's called. Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Of course, for purposes of people in the sector and policy play, I mean, makers and all of those things, they would be interested to know where or the origins of some of these things and where this is situated and all of that. Mm. But in the final analysis, the reality is that it's a utility. It is a utility that people really don't feel that they have any need to be so uh, uh, concerned about, as far as they're concerned, like I've indicated several, they want their lights on. When you sort of try to say that there's some kind of political um, leverage or some kind of mileage that will come out of it, yes, I mean, I'm sure that you can always nitpick and, I mean, do these things. But as far as I'm concerned, 
That's also the reason why the NDC are probably a bit jittery about it. You understand? So it's True. almost as if that we are being, we are all, if I'm being very honest, and I, sound, I like to be yeah. objective yeah. on this conversation. Because apart from that, really, I don't really see uh, the big deal in, 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 the, in, in this conversation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even in Kumasi today, probably will not even notice that. Um, I mean, this thing is being done. Maybe the only thing that would be important to them is that they might now notice that there's an improved, uh, I mean, an the, improvement the in the energy. On the basis of press conferences and the discussion and all that, uh -huh. now they know. Oh, yeah. I mean, but the, the, so, so that's what I'm saying, that it's almost everybody trying to sort of derive some kind of political capital mm. from this. But as far as I'm concerned, in the larger scheme of things, we can all agree that, yes, it's a right thing to do. Like you indicated, once you look at even the last population census that was done in terms of the population density and all of those things, it makes sense that you find a way of democratizing these uh, uh, resources. I mean, for security purposes, you understand what I'm saying? It makes sense. And so sometimes, for me, I like to have these conversations on the basis of that. As for the politics, it would come. You can probably go and put anything anywhere, and people will not but, necessarily. But Eric, uh, it will make any political capital for you. Yeah, Eric, that's what, Eric yeah. what the NDC is trying to do is to expose the hypocrisy mm -hmm. of this current government led by Akufuado. That is what the NDC is no, trying to do. No, but I mean, if you're taking, you see, you cannot even. And in fact, yeah. it we our position is uh, vindicated by the utterances of Kujopoku, mm -hmm. when he indicates that the name Ameri comes with nothing but, apart from rent-seeking, corruption in our view. Mm. Why would you want to now use a corrupted asset as a basis to make some political capital in a place? And of course, that's what... Uh, look, first, but, you have taken up a plant. Look, as we speak now, one of the challenges that we're even also having, you know, when they took out the American plant, for a long time, you not know, because they took it up, God knows when, for a long time, because it was not in the system, if it was running and it was still situated at uh, Takrade. So we will not have the challenge of this fuel transmission cost that uh, WAPCO was dealing with us by virtue of the fact that we were not paying it. How? And, you know, WAPCO will not have been dealing with that because they would have been fed directly by the Abuazi pipe, pipeline. So we would have still had fuel that was running and that would have augmented the system. So this was something that was already within the system. You took it out of the system. You are bringing it back into the system. It is not, and if you compare this to other major projects that, for example, the uh, Grico has done, building bulk supply points. You have ECG now, even though part of their stories were lies, that you had them putting up transformers. These were new transformers they were bringing. These are major projects that, to a very large extent, are, are worthy of uh, what do you call it, comments, as it were. Then you leave all those things. Then you have the whole president go. If you think that there was no political value to this, and it was just a whole idea of just me and that the people, they wanted to improve the people's lives and other things. Then you have the whole president. In a, a situation where, as we speak, now, like economic crisis and what have you, moving all the way to Kumasi to go and have such, and that's also an additional cost. Look, any time the president moves, money is spent. But that's so, why know, I have a problem. You see, you, you know, you're talking about hypocrisy here. Yeah. Right? And that's why I have a problem with some of these conversations. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, I'm not sure you're saying that the president, all of a sudden, by virtue of some challenges or whatever, does not have the right to go to any part of this country no, I'm not, no, I'm not and that. even inspect. I mean, we have a president, even, even when it's not, it's not a commission. No, what I'm saying that, even if it's not commissioning anything, has a right to even go and inspect any ongoing project or visit any part of the country. If he finds himself in that part of the country and he feels that it's important that these issues are highlighted or these particular projects are highlighted, he will do that. You don't want yeah, to be associated but, with but, a, 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 no, a no, project, but, a project but, but that, 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 when that... You, when, you use, <laughs> is it, when you use words like you're trying to expose the hypocrisy of the NPP, then Excellent. I would have issues with that because, I mean, when it comes to hypocrisy, I mean, I don't think that we should be taking lessons from you. There's a plethora of, you are the people, you guys, are the ones when President Kufo found oil, I mean, we found oil in commercial quantities, took uh, uh, Adjungo, you know what Adjungo is, Good. right, to Parliament and said that, oh, it's a lie. 
is a lie, and that it's not possible. We haven't found anything. And you, 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 you godly, right, took and uh, uh, appropriated the benefits of an oil sector that was found in commercial quantities, and you were even uh, uh, working in that domain. How can you work in a domain that was a jungle? You understand what I'm saying? The NHS. For example, when the NHS were being passed in Parliament, your people actually put through the idea. Yes, that we did. did. And yeah, we did. Yeah, and, but, that yeah, why, and that so, is why and that is why I'm that's why we that, came that, and changed it. Listen, because it was a mutual insurance. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I finish? Yeah. So when it comes to these conversations, you know, sometimes when we have these political uh, discussions, you can bandy words around. But once you're bandying these words around, you have to, you have to look within. And I, I like the fact that, yes, if there's something wrong, something untoward has happened, and there's something that is way off the, 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 the realms of uh, decency. Of course, let's question it. Let's point it out. But honestly, the president decides to go and even go to a book launch or a reading club for kindergarten kids and all that. I see absolutely nothing wrong with that because his job entails making sure that every facet of our society People would would feel him and see him, and there's an impact there. There's but nothing Eric, wrong with Eric, that. I'm surprised but that, once you go, Eric, I'm and surprised you start that, to see like hypocrisy and all no, of no, that. No, that's why I'm saying that. Eric, I'm surprised it's, that. I'm surprised that. Yeah, in, in in all my submission, yeah. the only part you took was the issue of naming. I talk about so sourcing of a contract no, but, and a change of issue. value of this is. You do not see... Is it, uh, I'm not here to... Yes, yeah, so you are not interested in dealing with have, those aspects. I could have, I could have dealt because with Because these are major issues. No, I, I see... major, I, major issues. Okay, can I... They are major so issues. So if you ask me, I'll say yeah. that, right? Soul sourcing. If there are issues with soul sourcing and you feel that maybe you could have gone to another entity, like you stated that uh, VRE, right? said that they had the capacity to do so, right? And that's the reason why the people watching the taxpayers' monies are used to pay someone like you as a member of parliament, and you also have the privilege to actually sit on the energy committee, right? And apart from that, you have other powers. You know, and my challenge, I mean, I'm sure, I hope I don't get called to the privileges committee. Go on, my go challenge on. with parliament as an institution, even mm -hmm. sometimes, is the fact that you guys pick and choose which aspects of this whole parliament that at one point is the parliament as a whole when you take certain decisions. And then at one point you want to now dissect and differentiate between what is a minority and a majority. When in the principle of the constitution, once a decision has been made, it is a parliamentary decision because it becomes very clear that the, the proponents you know, of our you know, can I make my point? No, no, just, no, to, no, 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 just I, to help you. I knew that there is absolutely no way that all the 33 million people in this country can go into a chamber and arrive at a decision. In the same way, there's, there's no expectation that the 275 of you sitting in parliament will have a certain uh, uh, way of thinking. Way of thinking. But at least that is the reason why you have your, 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 your protocols, we have rules, we have regulations, you have your standing orders did you, and all did, of those did, things, did you right? see? Did and you so, see the comments that were made by the uh, chairman for I'm, Mines and Energy make, after we met? I'm coming here, just yeah, to yeah, help you. Yeah. Just so you will continue. Did you see the comments that were made by the chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee attached here, asking the uh, ECG to publish uh, a timetable? Yes, I have seen it. Yes, has it been done? No, but, but and you know I, why? And I, because I, I, the limitation of parliament uh -huh. is that we just exercise a legislative yeah, function. But, it but, is but the, I, the power to do listen, that is an executive function. Listen, so I'm just giving you the, the limitations of parliament. That I, even in crisis, mm -hmm. when parliament gives some orders, the orders are supposed to be carried by the executive. Yeah, but the, you guys have so you have you have you have you have remedies in place in when it suits you. I don't. That's what I, I don't want to get into trouble. When it suits you, parliament is able to take a stand and use whatever it is that it has in its, uh, in, in its armory to make the executive take, uh, 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 make... Uh, what, what do you want parliament No, but that's what I'm saying. That what do you want parliament All that I'm saying is yes. that if, as we speak, if the uh, friends in the energy committee, for example, or even the, in, the, in the minority side, feel that this process in terms of the procurement process, the sole sourcing, and all of those things, and there were certain things that were untold. Uh, but homies, they have the right to even call the Minister of Energy 
into who is also a member of parliament and ask questions. The CEOs. We did that with VR. We did that with VR. We did that with VR. And answer those questions. And I gave you the venue. Then, but I have a problem. We did that with VR. I have a problem. Mm -hmm. When people who are engaged in political comms and public speaking for political entities and governments, take the narrative that you take. Okay. Because in that case, yeah. then any party that has representation in parliament mm -hmm. must not speak in public. No. They must use the parliamentary process no, no, Randy, that's to the, seek that's all the answers right. they want mm -hmm. and to find all the solutions they want and to ask all the questions they want. Mm -hmm. In that case, we should not even be entertaining any entity that has a representation in parliament in the public space. No, Randy, that's not what I'm saying. Yes. What I'm saying is that. That's why I said it in, in twofold. Mm. You, you understand know what I'm saying? So, for example, you can state your position on a matter. Parliament is on recess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no as I, we speak, yeah, I, Parliament I, is on recess. I, I understand. How does it go and ask a question when Parliament is on no, recess? No, but, but the point is, this process didn't start when par Parliament went to recess. Oh, the issue of the naming uh, and the 30-something no, million no, no, is on recess. No, but I'm saying it that. But they knew, we knew about the relocation of the plan for maps. Oh, no, but it's, it's not the relocation. The they, don't, they have not taken issue with the relocation. All right. They haven't. Right. They haven't taken issue with it. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll be back shortly. <laughs>
Ah, draw no nasa si ano eh. Mami niya ba niya? Mhm. Mhm. Wah! Kostoma. Wadi. 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 Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh bread. I'm a fat missy way. Prepatio Bantama. Matasi. That's a psycho. It's her smile, the fresh bread. Me, Jiddy said we used to kill 360 toothpaste. So, me, Kai. Kill 360 toothpaste. Guys, here. Kill 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Oh, name John Kazan Kazan Kazan. Kill a horse. Kill three sixty dead that way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. A you so so feeling to kill when you need a yeah. Kill three sixty toothpaste. Happy smile. Kill three sixty toothpaste. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kill happy smile. This apple is FDA approved. It's good to stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Fritol, a vitamin A fortified oil. Fritol, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. In today's modern world, Stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses, and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, the elevator people. Fortune Rice, it's me and Mu Ediane Bia. Who can see your career be pay and Mulanki come? None of your mini daddy. Delicious. Said your mom, it's here no pepe. Yet the fortune and Mopa Abedraso. Dana Mua Ed, Ma and Mu Ediane Nina. FD Aje Ejedian Kratuayatu. Introducing the new Jama washing powder with multi enzymes that helps remove stubborn stains. It has a nice fragrance. Mm-hmm. Not harsh on my hands. Mm-hmm. Forms easily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and removes things well. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, I saw to be. I, I, Ma, I, he brought five big sachets of new Jama washing powder. Yes, ma'am. It really removes stains. It has a nice fragrance. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> then add 30 sacks of Jama washing powder to your engagement list. Hey, ma'am. Oh, Jama. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> new Jama washing powder for cleaner, fresher wash. Your partner for clean clothes. This advert is FDA approved.
Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Still with me on the show, I have Erica Makuchun and um, also the Honorable Edward Bawa. Now, what does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember, I was got the mullah, got the power. Ghana's newest lottery game goes live on Adum TV at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. daily. Now, pick up your phones, tablets, and computers and download the Gamepa Games app on Play Store. You can also play on their website at www.gamepagames.com. Or by dialing star 946 hash on all networks. Just choose four numbers from 0 to 9. It's easy to play and easy to win. Charlie will play this game and make some mola. Nobody beats our ult in Ghana. Game Park Games, more mola, more power. This game is regulated by a National Lottery Authority and is not for persons under 18 play responsibly. <coughs> Ayesoku, that cost on both damn be big, but Betway's cash out be bigger. Betway is giving you more control of every thrilling bet you place. Enjoy the biggest and most reliable cash out in Ghana on Betway without any hassle. Sign up today at betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Not for persons under 18. This is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Betway, get way more. And Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been on the Ghanaian market for over 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana which are known to boost your strength and energy as well, as promote high performance and endurance. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It's indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women. So go on, grab a cold can, and power your day. It's in shops nationwide. For bulk purchases, contact Budget Cash and Cry Limited on 0208-128190 or 55 All right, so... Eric, let, let's talk about the ECG mm. and, of course, all the issues. So um, it's now um, public knowledge that the PURC um, gave an order somewhere in March. I think it was the 18th of March. And um, it was in respect to three broad items. So tariff revenue allocation under the cash waterfall mechanism, provision of regulatory audit data, and submission of information related to operational matters, and also the provision of other regulatory audit data. Now, uh, the, the, there were deadlines. The last one was on the second day of April 2024. Um, now, on the 15th of April 2024, the PURC uh, then issued uh, the order uh, in respect of these uh, directives, and it details everything. I mean what was complied, what was not complied um, um, with. And then he made some findings. And um, the findings, broadly speaking, indicates that there's been a flagrant abuse of the cash waterfall mechanism. And I, I find something interesting, that um, apparently from August of last year, the ECG has not complied. And then when they got this order on the 18th of March, they made sure that they paid that of March. But uh, from August uh, till February, uh, they had not paid. And we're told that is um, in excess of 400 million uh, um, CDs. Then also the issue of um, um, outages, I mean, the operational issues. So the commission says that established from its analysis of data submitted that there were 4,142 4, outages to consumers uh, between January and March. Out of this number, 165, representing 3.98 were ECG planned outages. Now, further analysis showed that of the 165 ECG planned outages, 40 were supported by public notices, while there were no notices for the remaining 125. Further, 38 of the 40 notices did not comply with the requisite three-day statutory notice prescribed under the regulation. This indicates that in 163 instances of planned outages, ECG did not comply with the law. Then, the almighty overloaded transformers. And uh, the... ECG, uh, the commission says that after analyzing all the data, ECG's attribution of the outages between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. to transform overload was not factually accurate. The cause of these outages are the subject of investigation is already being undertaken by the, the, the commission because they're saying that um, uh, out of the 715 transformer details submitted, 31 were loaded less than 70%, 595 were loaded between 1700 and only 89 were above 100 uh, percent. So, on the basis of this, uh, some decisions uh, have been uh, uh, made. And so, it also turned out that the ECG has 61 bank accounts. 
61. 61. And out of this 61, they could only furnish, uh, yes, the PURC with the details of 31. 61 bank accounts, different bank accounts. Okay. Then uh, um, the, 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 the board of ECG has been, has been fined. They, the PURC says that if the fine is on the organization, well, it will translate into higher tariffs. You use the organization's money to pay. So it believes that the directors who also have um, duties and responsibilities should be held personally liable uh, for this. And um, it is also relying on uh, uh, Section 32 of Act 538 uh, to, to pursue that. Uh, what do you make of this? Um, Randy, I'm actually very excited. Excited about uh -huh. and then, having. Let me just add this a one. Regulator. Okay. Apparently, they say there's a Kumasi Hercules, the regional minister, and the ECG. According to the story, the ECG uh, went there. So we have the union also coming up to speak mm -hmm. about it. Say so they went there with a the task force to do a revenue mobilization and therefore do disconnections, and they disconnected some institutions, including the Kumasi Technical Technical University. University. The minister ordered the regional uh, manager to reconnect them. He says that he can only do so when he has instructions from Accra and nowhere else. The minister is reported to have then ordered the police to detain him until he complies with the directive. So that's where the Hercules uh, has come from. Okay, now I have it. it hasn't come to my attention. Okay. When I get a bit more information, there, I will <laughs> respond. But... Um, <laughs> You know, Randy, mm -hmm. uh, I like the fact that we have a regulator that is making sure that persons that have been given positions of authority are seen to be complying to the very regulations that are supposed to govern that particular uh, sector. And so I was very curious to even go into the persons that make up the commission. And it's very interesting. So, and there are people that I find here that even if you want to uh, ascribe political leanings, would know that where they are coming from. But they look beyond that and actually has ordered this particular find. And I, I'm sure that if it is something that we can actually replicate in most of these are public sector institutions. Probably that's the, a step in the right direction. And I, I think that's a positive um, precedent that I, I, I honestly feel that is the right way to go. Now, so af apart from that, uh, if you look at the sort of uh, compliance status or things that ECG were meant to have complied with, I think we've mentioned a few of them, so I don't want to really uh, repeat them. It's very clear that uh, these things started on a note of some kind of dialogue and expectation that the management and board of ECG will comply with these things, and they haven't. You remember the last time that we had this conversation, I think around the 630 Transformers, and I made a, a claim that if well and truly that's supposed to be the challenge that we are facing, and they feel that over a period of two, three weeks, uh, they'll be able to re-engineer uh, this thing so that we'll not have these challenges. I mean, two, three weeks is not a very long time. And, I mean, the issues will come to the fore. And it's very clear that, as far as you're concerned, um, they're saying things that maybe is happening at the ECG that uh, they themselves are not being uh, forthcoming and not being uh, proactive when it comes to the communication of it. And I think that that cannot be counted. It's not something that we should encourage. Uh, people who consume utility have every right to know what the challenges are. And I, I, I feel that uh, as a regulator, they have done the right thing. Now, it behoves on ECG to also tell their side and say that these are the reasons why we are having these challenges and these are the reasons why we haven't complied. And because if you don't do that, then, of course, you haven't given them a fair... Uh, hearing, but in, in the larger scheme of things, as far as people are concerned, they want their lights on. So the uh, conversation has moved from whatever challenges that you're facing to making sure that when it comes to 
the provision of information. You do that in earnest. You give people an opportunity to make some of these uh, informed decisions about whatever it is that they want to do so that we do not come to this point. You, you, you understand? So as far as I'm concerned, uh, these are the things that we need to be concerned about. The PRC had taken its time to go through all the, uh, the information that had been presented by the ECG. It turns out that some of the things that they asked for had been complied with, others had not been complied with. You know, so, and this is the act, and the ECG cannot uh, play ignorance, cannot be uh, ignorant of this particular act that is supposed to be uh, regulating that particular sector. Right, and so I think that it's gotten to the point where they have to tell us the reasons why these things are not being complied with. Mm. So that at least if there are challenges within the sector and there are things that we need to have this conversation around, we can do so. Mm. One of the things that, I mean, uh, caught my attention is the, um, the projections that have been given to ECG in terms of collection of its uh, tariffs. And we grappling with the whole conversation around do we uh, make everything uh, prepaid or the whole postpaid conversation and what do we do with even public sector institutions. You know, and I think that uh, outside that, the PRC should also probably lead in the conversation around how do we fund uh, ECG when government itself is the largest consumer of ECG, by virtue of all these public sector institutions that are also uh, uh, taking money from the consolidated funds. So in one breath, you have this whole challenge of government being the 100% shareholder of ECG. And there are public sector institutions that are supposed to also be owned by the state that are, in essence, also owing ECG. So really, sometimes what tends to happen is that there's a certain variance in terms of what the ECG is supposed to uh, collect in, in terms of tariffs and the kind of investment and support that is also meant to come from the state. And I think as a people, I mean, I've always maintained that there has to be some kind of op, I mean, eff optimum efficiency levels that can be over this period with the data and information that should be available to us to know that at this particular rate of investment, ECG will be able to be efficient. I think that we need to do that, do that hard work because like you indicated, I mean, even with the story from Kumasi, you can't also have the case that, I mean, that's a university, as important as it is, you have crucial institutions and uh, stuff like uh, the hospitals and uh, all of these things who are all owned by the state who sometimes have to be taken off the grid because they are owing money. But in reality, that is also the responsibility of, of the state. And we need to find a way of harmonizing and rationalizing this particular uh, investment that should go to ECG all the time. So that doesn't become a situation where almost every time how we have to do How different, for example, is the payment of utility bills from the payment of salaries mm -hmm. or the payment of consumables, mm -hmm. let's say in the case of hospitals. Mm -hmm. How different is that? I don't think it's different. I think that we, 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 we sort of have gotten away because that is not almost a, a, an immediate responsibility to pay for because we've always, over the period, enjoyed the services anymore so, all, all the time. So, for example, you have an institution apparently that was owing 70 million Ghana cities. You understand? Which means that over the period, that you, you will never get to 70 million Ghana cities even in a year. So it's probably over like a, a whole 10-year period or something, that institution has actually not paid for electricity. And it's, it's consuming electricity. I, I'm, sure that, and, I'm sure that, for example, from the ECG's point of view, if some of these entities owed up to a point, mm -hmm. but were current mm -hmm. on their consumptions, mm -hmm. the ECG could have a different look mm -hmm. at it. Because, you see, um, for me, if you take educational institutions, mm -hmm. why must they not be unprepared? I can make an exception to hospitals, mm -hmm. for hospitals. Yeah. Maybe with the hospitals. For, 
usually the argument has only been the essential areas for yes, the yes, For doctors, flash nurses, yes, nurses. Yes. You can't why must they not have? Yeah, why yeah, must they not be unprepared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're talking about the theaters, maybe the labs, mm -hmm. uh -huh, you could make some case for those places. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that even for surgeries, most hospitals will prefer to be on generator than the national grid, just in case. <laughs> Goes, I mean, yeah. something goes off. So, some of these things I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, why must an educational institution not be uh, unprepared? And if you look at these educational institutions, to be honest, in terms of the classrooms themselves, what is their consumption of electricity? The lecture house. Mm -hmm. How much electricity do they consume? If you go to the institutions, mm -hmm. you will see that a larger chunk of the electricity is consumed and perhaps the non um, I don't want to say core because people will come in and they argue what, <laughs> what they think is core and not core. Uh -huh. But if you look at all the bungalows and all those things, I'm saying that if you are going to prioritize salaries mm -hmm. and know that every month I have to pay X for salaries, you must still you must do save for utilities. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I but even with the universities, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. with the universities you have, you know, the if you look at your fees. You have what we call the academic use of fee mm -hmm. and the facility use of fee. Yes. The facility use of fee, they factor in energy cost. Energy cost right? The students pay. Yeah, so those, those are for, let's say, the hostels. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. for the, the hostels, hostels yes. and maybe lecture houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But if, when it comes to like maybe common areas and all mm -hmm. of those, and then it comes, the question is, I mean, who is responsible for that? But that's what I'm saying that. You need to have almost like I mean, a how multi... Many, how many uh, public, public uh, tertiary institutions use um, ACs in lecture house. How many? Yeah. Right. So and so I, I, I think that, honestly speaking, the issue to do with the, the financial um, uh, regime in that energy sector should be looked at. You know, I've always maintained that. Even this thing about, and my sound very simplistic, this thing about Gridco and VRA and all the other, I mean, if you're talking about the IPPs, maybe it's a totally different uh, uh, conversation because you, yeah, that's the reason why the, even the cash waterfall uh, is put in place. But even when it comes to those institutions, by best practice, I mean, and I think that uh, you, you, you would also bear with me that you would always have the amount of investment that is required for those entities to be able to be efficient. You understand? So because you take a state as almost like a, a, a set of strategic business units and Normally, monies are not supposed to be necessarily changing changed. hands. You know, so this all maybe coming from my corporate background, this whole conversation that oh, this entity owes this person this amount of money, and that's the reason why they are not being efficient. It's a difficulty for me, and I think that because they, there's a state interest in there, it's important that at every level, at every point in time. We know that when it comes to grid core, when it comes to VRA, when it comes to these entities, there's an optimum efficiency level that needs to be at, at every point in time. And the state and the, those institutions would be more efficient in the collection of the, the revenues and the tariffs that they're supposed that's to that's do. Right. That's right. That's right. right. But be, because then we will not have this challenge. So even sometimes we have issues to do with investment because there's this whole concept of there's a debt Overhang. And that's why we had to, even over a period, different governments have tried all sorts of approaches, and that is ESLA and all of those things, to deal with the issues in, in the energy sector. That's I'm not an expert. That's why ESLA is. We just misapply the money. Right. I'm not an expert in the, in the space, but I feel that when it comes to the right uh, financial engineering, be able to make. Is ECG fit for purpose? But you see, we've had this conversation, and that's what I'm saying. Like, see, in this country, if you're not careful, you will throw the baby away with the bath water. Do you understand what I'm saying? From time memorial, when you even go back to this whole Millennium Challenge thing, um, what birthed uh, PDS and all of those things, there are issues. There are issues to do with efficiency. Corruption. <coughs> but it's not part of it. You understand? There are issues to do with uh, efficiency, management, administration, systems. And all of those things that sometimes in the, what you term a public sector setup, you have issues. So they're best practice. Look at, there's examples of uh, uh, BT mm -hmm. and uh, 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 what they, uh, another 
Thatcher regime, they tried to basically um, privatize all public sector energy uh, entities and break them into uh, various components. The right. system is privatized. Right. So that it became more... And this is, this, we are talking about a system that is supposed to be even more <coughs> efficient than ours. Because it's very clear that once you don't adopt <coughs> those very stringent, clear, like uh, corporate governance systems in place, you will, you, will, you will struggle. But that is a conversation that for, even, for us as a people, devoid of all the, the politicking and all that, what should be as we speak? Is the, is the, truth, they, is the truth not that? It, when governments are setting up this board and making appointments, mm -hmm. they think of what can be benefited um, individually or whatever from these institutions. They think of the the procurement gigs from this institution rather than... Because, look, you can check the board of ECG, for example, and look at some of the people sitting on the board or who were on the board and what credentials they had in private sector and how this particular entity has been run for the last seven years. And ask yourself, how come? Things that will not be tolerated in that space because it directly affects people and the KPIs are more stringent and all that are happening here. If you have a cash <coughs> waterfall mechanism, and this is a mechanism which is under the auspices of the vice president, yeah. you have a cash, for, a cash waterfall mechanism, and all the parties agree that this is going to be the formula. <coughs> when receipts come in, they are declared, this is how we share it. Is agreed. The ECG itself decides later that it's not too satisfied. Goes to have private arrangements with IPPs on how much they'll pay them to vary it. Okay. They also accept it. And yet, ECG is unable to go by that very thing at its own instance on the basis of its own proposal. And we are told that just between August and now, close to 500 million. Has been put in has it, yes. Has not been put into the account. I mean, the people who sit on those boards, would they run a company like that and have 61 bank accounts to do what? 61 different accounts to do what? Andy, it's just, it's just pure indiscipline. It's just pure indiscipline. You see, you, you have been But giving... discipline, I think, is deliberate. It's deliberate. For a certain outcome. It's yes. Yeah. You see, because if you have publicly... You have a presidency that run a single account. Then you end up, until even this report, all of us thought that it was around 37 accounts. Mm. Then you run 61 accounts. They appoint an auditor to audit this. Give us the documents for us to audit this. You refuse to give the documents. So that story is true. Oh, yeah, it's true. Okay, it's true. Because it's easy. Easy. The, the president, easy. The president two or three weeks ago, yeah. when this issue of the audit report has been presented. The mm. president is keeping it. Then we saw a statement signed by Eugene yeah. saying that yes, the president was bad. It will be made public. Yeah. It's been three weeks. It's not been made public. But I saw the Herald publish. So that's how come yeah. what you said resonates yeah. with me. Yeah. You know? So there was, a, there was an audit. Yes, and audit. The, the audit suggests some yes. of Yes, In fact, it was PwC that was contracted to audit them. So the president orders, orders an audit. Yes. The entity will not comply. Comply. So the auditors in their report are complaining to the president. Complain, that yes. this, it, it, this the PURC itself, which is the regulatory body, yes. itself also speaks about non-compliance by ECG. ECG. And you see, you, see, you see, the two issues that have brought us to where we are now, you see, I, I appreciate all the points you made. Issues of efficiency. How should we do strategic decisions we should take to ensure that we pump... Uh, Efficiency, I, I agree with you on all those things. But let's even come to the fact that after, let's, even in the face of all our, our inefficiencies, mm -hmm. the money that finally we are able to get, mm -hmm. how do we, what do we do with the money? That is a key issue. That has been. And if you look at this, even though, yes, there's a projection that uh, the PRC had given that, look, they know that we, we know that in terms of your collection, you may not be able to collect all. So we'll give you a benchmark of 98%. So it means that for two percent of your collection losses, mm -hmm. we we'll factor that into the tariff. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to make ninety-eight. Based on the sales that have been posted by ECG itself, they should be they should be collecting roughly around eight point nine 
billion. But for the purposes of the cash water fund, I said, look, we may have, we may have some challenges that mm -hmm. earlier we didn't know how you made. But for seven billion, we know that you can collect seven billion. You, you, you collect seven billion. Put that seven billion in the account for payment. Mm -hmm. You refuse to do that. And you, within that period, you put just about 4.9 billion inside. So you have a huge sum of money that has been there that nobody knows where it is being put. You recall that is, uh, just before the la this current one, this current uh, exercise that has finally brought the people to Kumasi and this minister is arresting people over the place. The, the what do you call it? The, the, the MD had announced mm -hmm. that the target was to collect 7 billion. Mm -hmm. They collected 5.7 7 billion. That money never went to the cash waterfall mechanism. How on earth do you expect that an entity, a state-owned enterprise, from August up to February, the person has not been given a dime? How do you think that the person should be able to meet its operational cost? That's the first part of the issue. So the issue about even accounting for the money that has been collected. The second point, and the reason why the president was asking for a single account was because so that they can, they can trace the money. Because what is happening is that these revenues are taken and spread across all the accounts, and nobody knows exactly where the money is. I get the point. So that's the first aspect. Now, the second aspect is that you, the, the PRC says, and these are the regulations, PRC says, look, we have, a, we have a crisis. The crisis we have, you can't get power for all people at the same time, whether off-peak or uh, peak period. So publish a timetable that we can all deal with. You issue a statement deceiving the public that the reason why you're doing it, you were you were replacing 650, uh, 630 uh, transformers. They tell you, give us the GPS location, give us the what they call it, the, the ratings of those plants. Because the basis for which you will want to change a, a business is that it is overloaded because the capacity is low, and so for so it's being overloaded. So why is and then so on the basis of that it affects its ratings and other things. So give us data on all these transformers you are going to change. Only for us to realize that if you take the 30, that is even less than 70. And then the 590 is something, is for, that is about between 70 and 100. You put them together, that's about 626 of those particular, simply are performed as supposed to be. And this is not based on PURC's assessment. They're based on the data provided by ECG itself. But you were bold enough to issue a statement deceiving the public. The part of the reasons, or no, not the part, the reason why we're having the low shedding was that uh, you were, uh, between 7 and 11 was because of the fact that you were changing transformers. When, in reality, the number of transformers that actually went beyond 100% in terms of load was just about 89 of them. So, that's the, so you see that there was even an issue of deception of the public. Of the, uh, of the public. Now, you now, and that is the part that I'm so disappointed in also the ministry. The ministry, you are the superintendent agency. Usually in crisis like this, because you are the, you represent the president and you are the shareholder, basically, of the, you call all these agencies, you bring them together and say, look, let's see how we can resolve this issue. Now you have your agencies fighting and each of them now, it's just like you have kids in the house. One person will go and come back and say, daddy, this person has done this to me. That's exactly the picture that is being, that is being painted here. And on this, Randy, I support Greco full, full, full full time. The reason is this. Greco knows that, look, based on our supply and our demand, the demand outstrips the supply. So it tells you that, look, we know what your demand has been over the period. For example, today, we are going to have this amount of power, so it won't meet your, your demand. So shared X amount of power. You would, <laughs> if you have a timetable, you would be able to know that yesterday, uh, Eric got, uh, what do you call it, lies. So today, tomorrow, he will not get, but uh, what do you call it, Eddie will get. So you, you understand the point. So you, you have a schedule that everybody, so you tend to find a way of spreading the difficulties among all of us in a fair manner. The Greco tells you to shed load. You refuse and you put everybody on. Greco sits at his comp uh, control room and sees that there's a problem. He sees that, look, the load is, the load is stripping the supply. And usually when that, that happens, what happens is that if you don't arrest it immediately, you have a total shutdown. That's why sometimes you see you have this national uh, blackout all over the place because maybe a, trip, a, a plant has tripped and has brought, uh, made a load, uh, sorry, yes, that is demand has stripped that. It tells you to do that. You don't do it. They sit in their control and they see that it's a problem. 
immediately they will not be sitting there and thinking that oh eric didn't get license today so let me not put eric down he's trying to save his system so he looks for the largest load and dump them so he can dump you today dump you tomorrow dump you tomorrow next and that's why you have some areas who constantly will not have lies mm -hmm. and some areas having lies and it is a basis for which Grico had to uh, report to the minister but i think there is an indictment on the minister because you should be able to sit there and call your agency heads to order unless the agency heads have some power that we do not know and randy for ecg and you know look i have not me i've never even met uh, the gentleman one-on-one -on -one like this apart from the fact that in the committee level but if you look at what ecg is doing now and they the way they are running the organization that guy has created a false image of himself and his management and the facts are not beginning to come because there are some of the reports of course they have complied with some of these reports but they are reviewing the reports you'll be surprised to see more serious things than we, we are having and me look if if you were even sticking to the directives that have been given to you by ECG, then that, eh, sorry by prc and for that matter all other agencies would have been sorted by now now the issue of finding these board members and you were talking about even what was the quality of board members we have if you have a board, that between 2020. And most some of the board members, for example, if you see someone like Kelly uh, Gajibo, he was there for about seven years, am I right? Mm -hmm. Seven, he was in his eighth year. I think that his reason, when he resigned, my first comment I made publicly was that it was long overdue. You are heading, you are the board chairman of an organization. And in that organization, between two, at least, let me just even use the last four years, between 2020 and 2024, You've had losses move from around 26% to uh, uh, above 30%. And you are still seated there as a board. If you are running your private business and you are the board chairman and the company was posting such losses and other things, would you actually be... Uh, uh, would the shareholders fire you? But you were still there. So he, he, for him to have resigned was something he should have done long ago. But to the issues themselves, look, I think ECG, uh, sorry, PRC was so fantastic. And I also agree with you. I praise them for what they did. I agree. If, if you look at the names there, and here, I wonder, these are people who you will just see that, of course, they are MPP guys. But they, 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 they felt that, look, for once, we should put national interest above our uh, political, uh, parochial political interest, and therefore decided to collect. You know, it's very unusual. Usually, reports like this are signed just by the chief executive. Yeah. So it's unusual. I guess they are. I guess I guess they are fed up. Yes, it's unusual to. I guess they are just fed up. Fed up. Yeah. To have all these things been done. So, me, the fact that they have moved from the agency. Well, you know, they are giving an earlier, an earlier directive mm -hmm. for ECG to comply with the law, with the load shedding yeah, timetable yeah. and all that. ECG couldn't be bothered. There are other <laughs> trading accusations. I'm, I'm saying, look, it's only it's only perhaps in a country like this that when we are having these challenges, you find. ECG and Gridco trading accusations. I mean, accusations and counter accusations. accusations. It's only it's only here. And, 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 it's only here. You, you, Consumers have issues. They are asking questions. They want answers. And then, and then you have you ECG are, and Gridco and trading running, accusations. To their father and say, "Daddy, uh, uh, this and then is unfortunately, not doing, unfortunately, when the microphone is put before the minister, he says that, also says we well, can go and do your own timetable. I mean, look. I'm told, I'm told that you people are changing your chief executives. You are changing your chief executive. This should to be do, one... To do what? Ah, I mean, I mean they say that uh, this, look, one of the reasons Master, they're giving is that they say this the party problem, will, This problem is the, not a CEO is problem. It, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I am, I, I am not, I, I am not you. absorbing no, the I CEO of any blame. But it's not a CEO problem. But you see, until, look, there are some issues, there are some issues you and I know. This money that do not go into uh, the cash waterfall mechanism. They are used for procurement. They are used for procurement. Fear. And you know that in this country, the largest source of corruption is for procurement. And that's what I'm saying that, look, until the chief executive himself comes out to say that, look, I have been ordered not to do that. He's the one who will be held liable because you are the, you are the head of the management at, or, 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 of ECG. Then the vice president, who superintends over this, who's supposed to be an accountant, who's supposed to be running the economy, who has read documents that indicated that the, the largest threat to our economy is the indebtedness of the energy sector. You have read all this, and you still so pretend over this rot. What is, uh, I mean, listen, come on.
I am not the one saying this is a this is a state document. This is a document issued by a state agency, a regulator that falls. That, no, you know, PRC doesn't fall under the uh, Ministry of Energy. Presidency. It falls under the presidency. So this is an agency that falls under the uh, the presidency issuing a document. Why shouldn't I take it and say that this? Why? Well, when you read, didn't you see? I mean, even this? the the cash water flow mechanism. <laughs> it's under those pieces of vice president. Yes. The vice president is the one who's pretending the cash water flow mechanism. Then he will go to Senyani and say, "This and we have overperformed. We need to go. That we have overperformed. We need to go." But um, there's something interesting happening today. Uh, the Ghana Journalist Association is in its 75th year, and so um, there's going to be the launch of the uh, 75th GG anniversary. And so it says 75 years of that's a theme: 75 years of excellence in journalism, honoring the past, embracing the present, and shaping the future. And of course, uh, the chairperson for the event is Nana Kwesi Jan Apentin, former NMC chairman. The keynote speaker is Sir Sam Jonah. The special guest is Honorable Kojo Ponkrumah, Minister of Works and Housing and Caretaker Minister for Information. And the host, of course, the GGA President, Albert Kwabna Junfo. And it's happening at the Labadi Beach Hotel today, today at 1 p.m. Today at 1 p.m. That's the GGA 75th anniversary. Um, launch. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting to, to listen to Sir Sam Jonah's uh, speech. I don't know if it will be a boom or a bam. <laughs> I can't tell. But, uh, Are we allowed to wish the GGA well? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. I, think, I think that um, uh, 75 years, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, and even when it comes to the development of this country, you cannot take away the illustrious careers and the sort of sacrifices that journalists have uh, made for this country. Uh, if you start mentioning names, you get into trouble. I have to go and pay my dues. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I mean, for any student of politics or who's interested in uh, uh, political affairs and even the, the development of this country, you would have definitely encountered some of the writings and some of the journalistic work that has been done. We used to stay up and listen to all sorts of programming and coming in early in the morning to uh, buy the newspapers and all of this. And I used to spend my pocket money buying newspapers, mm. you know. So that's how come, I mean, some of us even develop an interest in uh, in public service. Mm. We wish the GGA well. Right. I mean, the only thing I'll say is that, mm. look, uh, I just hope that GGA itself can push, particularly with media, uh, the owners of media houses, to take, take a second look up about in terms of the salaries of journalists, welfare, yeah. welfare of journalists. I think that is it the, the reason why sometimes, excuse my language, that they are not able to attract very high quality people is just also because they simply do not, the salary levels are just so bad. If you mm -hmm. talk to some of the journalists and you see the amount of money they receive at the end of the month, look, the only way they can do it is to just cut corners. So, GJ should also be if, taken. If out. you speak with the owners, yeah. and they also show you their books, mm -hmm. you would also see that <laughs> perhaps <laughs> a, a, a lot of them. It's not to make excuses, though. I, I think that, uh, you see, anything which is founded on freedom of speech, yeah. the, the regulatory space is always problematic. Yeah. You understand me? So, there are people who say that some of these things ought to be regulated in some other industries. There are things you can do. But for an industry which is founded on free speech, trying to regulate it is always a problem. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are two things that always come up when it comes to the journalism space in this country. One has to do with what you raised, the um, compensation. And then two, for me, extremely important, is training and retraining. Okay. If you like, do a research today. You will be shocked to find out that over 90% of media houses don't have a training and development policy. Mm. Meanwhile, even the labor law enjoins yes. every employer to train and retrain. But you see, is in this country, we really don't care. You know, people talk about the power of the microphone. They are quick to speak about what happened in Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? Yes. But in this country, we do not care who a microphone is trust in front of, front of, who has access to the microphone. If we did, we would look at things a bit more differently. And this is your op uh, opinion journalism. 
We have to take a second look. There's nothing wrong with it. No, I said we have to take yeah, a second look. Everything. You know it? what we need to do as yeah. a country? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is time for us to, it's long overdue, but I think this is one of the things we must do. The issue of public broadcasting. It must come on the front banner. Mm -hmm. And we must begin to look at it seriously. The issue of a public broadcaster. Yeah. You know, when I hear people talk about the polarized nature of Ghana and its politics and mm -hmm. everything, you see, it is in those instances where the relevance of a public broadcaster comes in. Comes in, okay. Even the almighty USA. Yeah, they, they still keep to the... As <laughs> capitalized and as liberal that it is, it recognizes the importance of public broadcasting. Yeah. And that's how come you still have the C-SPAN. Yeah. You still have NPR and, and all, and all of them yeah. still operating. Okay. And it's as if standards... There are laws regulating it. There are standards. There's the ombudsman. There's whatever. And so there are people who know that when I go to Fox, this is it. This is what I, I go to CNN. This is it. There is um, Erika Mwakutum's podcast. Yeah. I know what to expect. Yeah. But there is still a C-SPAN. There is still, if I'm in Minnesota, there's still the NPR. I mean. And I know that when I go there, all things considered, it is something different. So even the United States, and they have even a... Uh, if you look at the policy, they even have a, a, a funding policy. Yeah. Yeah. So it is not everything that is accepted. Mm -hmm. So some of the adverts that you'd find on... Uh, so now GBC, people even have a problem calling it a public broadcaster. They say state broadcaster. Yeah. I hope you understand me. Yeah. So we are pretending that we have public broadcasting. Do you understand me? But we are having a hybrid. I believe that public broadcasting is extremely important. But we either do it and do it well or forget about it. And I am not for the forget about it. I think that this country really, really, really needs an effective and an efficient public broadcaster. And we must sit at the table mm -hmm. and, and discuss, have a discussion, discussion on it yeah. and how to do it properly. Those in the private space, those with their biases and everything, there's enough space for everybody. But that this country needs a public broadcaster? My answer is yes. Do we have one? We think... We have one, we have a pseudo but we don't have. <laughs> and so we need to really look at it carefully and make sure that we have a public broadcaster in its full sense and do what we must do with it. Anyway, so as I indicated earlier, today is one of the favorite days as far as my life is concerned. It's the birthday of my son. Unfortunately, he's in school, so he won't be uh, watching me. But Jason... Just in the Abbey, happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday uh, to you. Uh, happy, birthday to happy, you. happy, happy birthday to you. 12. 12. Yes. yes. So happy birthday to you. Uh, yeah. yeah, gradually <laughs> developing a yes. brand new house. Today, <laughs> today is also the birthday of a lawyer, Nana Efiadosia. Nana Efiadosia, you are a lawyer. Happy, happy birthday to you from Akosis Ribo Boatin. Uh, he refers to you as the angel. So happy birthday. Nana, yeah. Um, Secretary, today is also your birthday. Happy birthday to you, Nane, Nane as well. So that'll be it, gentlemen. Thanks for joining me. Up next, GMG Trends and then Metro Sports. has sizes and in different sizes too you didn't know these fried small sachets that we all use to fry our meat and fishes to prepare our favorite meals and to refill our empty original fried pork hey are you sure you are a fellow Ghanaian <laughs> get your trusted fried small sachets today for affordability convenience and for the refilling of your original Frital bottle. Frital, you deserve a life of good.
goodness. This advert is FDA approved. Fortune Rise. It's me a mu ediane diara. Yan siu kakrebi pe a munun kikamu. Nani ham nene de di. Delicious. Said your mom it's here no pepe pe. Ya de fortune emu pa abejaso. Dana mua e de. Ma emu ediane nina. FDA aje eje di enkra tuwe yatum. Just like how water refreshes you on a hot sunny day, it takes a refreshing bath with a life soap to feel its pleasant fragrances. Leaving you with soft, smooth and fresh looking skin. You make me feel alive, you really brighten my day, day, my day. Available in lemon, coconut, rose and aloe vera fragrance. A life soap. Feel fresh, feel alive. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Time to check out what is trending on social media with Desi. How are you? Doc, very well. What's going on? Yeah, it, it was yesterday that I was livid, but they said we didn't do trends. So over the weekend, it's easy to worry me. Uh, what happened? Doc, from Friday night, 10 mm. p.m. to Sunday morning, 6 a.m. You didn't have light. Yeah. They say it's a localized problem. <laughs> and I'm saying do no Sunday now, 3 p.m. again. Oh. Hey. So the whole weekend was a horrible one for me. Please we beg. Mm. We beg then they should give us something like a timetable. Mm. Maybe Nana PRC has found find the bottom. Maybe they'll bring a timetable because we really need it. But anyway, this one we're gonna to go to Dubai. I will come back. But let me actually begin from yesterday the news about the Jailing of the former mass lock boss, and guess what? I hear no money during your people are tied pieces in that person. I Me, mean, I'm just saying what people are saying on social media. They're saying that, eh, why is that party there? Anyway, you let me read this one. This one says that when the fight against cops, if people like to say that power could quite have a for the party scene, can fair time, everyone could see what thing, um, a towel must all go to jail within the first hundred days of Mohammed's presidency. No room for corruption. So that is uh, also on there. This one says that once it's led up to be jailed, BOG governor to be jailed, also for causing financial loss to the state, EC board should be sacked, and an independent person from the civil societies takes over from the affairs of the EC, and the chief justice should relinquish her position as well. Uh, so that's when the person says when Mohammed well, comes into power. Michael says that led up is still moving freely despite the amount of money found in a room, which we all know, how that is described, uh, but one Tamaklo is sentenced for 10 years. And yes, yeah, so that's uh, Michael writing that also on Twitter about the jailing of uh, uh, Sedinam Tango. This is quite a lengthy one. It says, What else is there, Papa? The OSP, who is bent on having the media see him as a hero, decided to get the FBI to help investigate Sedinam Tango for any case of possible corruption. After much effort and digging, he, together with the world renowned FBI, found have free of corruption. So that's a lengthy one there. So um, so that's a lot of conversations going on with, with um, the ex mass lock boss who's been jailed for 10 years. And people say that uh, if you want to fight corruption, there are a lot of corruption going on in other places. So be like the attention for goes on the other side. Like I said, you know, I hear one side, I said, Fabi, I so I can't. So lots of people are talking about that also. Let's go to Dubai because. Hmm. Whenever it rains in Accra, a lot of people, well, we all feel it, we talk about it. Some people also say that the DNM, but the other places are flooded. Hey, Dubai has flooded. Hey, some, you know, crazy storms and, you know, rains there over the past few days has got the whole place um, flooded. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about it. It's, it's trending, it's in the trends. Um, yeah, so. You see that also there. 
Dubai. So that's that's also been in a trend this, this morning. This flood, this flooding is not as a result of silted mm -hmm. drains. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not as a result of um, um, uh, non-availability of drains. Of drains, yes. Or drains that are not uh, suit suitable mm -hmm. or not fit for purpose. Yeah. It is not as a result of a lack of proper planning. Yeah. If this kind happens here, happens here, <laughs> we will be wiped out. Yes. <laughs> and well, just, I mean, you you can find out when the water receded. Mm, yeah. Yes, this could have happened at a point in time. At a point in time. But you can find out first of all the amount of rainfall mm. and to how long it took for this to recede. To recede. That, that, so some people shouldn't use these videos to justify exactly whatever because what is what happens here mm. is that those, that amount of rainfall must not lead to flooding. To flooding. That's the point. So even just how come every time of, there's mm. a rainy season, a country that is getting close to seventy, the discussion is about desilting. Desilting. Does it make sense? True. Sure. And the rainy season is, is upon us. Desilting. <laughs> the silting. Uh, oh yeah, so, so I mean, I was you talk this. about the silting because there is silting. Yes, yes. Look, I was saying this in the newsroom earlier that wow, this is really, really interesting hearing about it because we know how things are sorted in that part of the of the world. In the I'm over there in Dubai, and we are talking in the So. Uh, that's also in the trend uh, this morning, Dubai, um, also in there. But, look, there's a video of um, mm. Akoke Jr. Uh, Did you see it? So it's campaigning. Ah. Uh, yes, it's campaigning. So you ask for campaigns. So you watch? That's right. They do a manner of things. They play hair. They, 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 they cook with people. They go and play cards. They bought rot rust. Mm. They go and eat when people are eating yeah, their eating. cake and things yeah. on their stools. They go and sit there and eat. Uh, they go and pound fufu at your bars. True, true, true. It's something that they do. Uh, like Dr. Bamiya do some sometimes. I say it's something that they all do. Uh -huh. I mean, it's something they do. <laughs> president Kupado <laughs> sat in Trotro. Since he became president, he's going to sit in EVSTC. I mean, they do, they they do all that. They do, they do all those things. So... <laughs> It's all part of it. Hey, yeah. so, so. Ah. The only thing you can you can tell is that there's somebody who has a, a I don't want to say I mean you can tell that he knows how to wash. <laughs> I mean he knows how so he tells you of his upbringing and, and all those things. I mean the things that he learned growing up, you know. And for us when we we're, were growing up, there was nothing like a washing machine. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. they wash with your hands. Yeah. Oh, pusa. yeah. Sa oh, pusa Saturday morning you had that's that <laughs> session, yeah. So you wash that stuff. It's uh, not you you guys who now have your oh, washing but, machine. Every like even wash. your underwears, you wash them in the machine. Now I they talk about the ladies, we still wash. Once a while. Mm. We still they do um, they wash. Yeah. So as for this one, you <laughs> in the next three four months, we will see play it. Oh, please. It's normal. <laughs> so we, that was on social media on, on TikTok and Twitter. It was crazy how this video was moving around. It's normal. Yeah, so I'm thinking of the wildest thing a politician could do. So, wildest thing. Mm. There's nothing like because right they're watching the day different level. Because the party food there, but why in a near D? What's your know? Well, you've yeah. gone somewhere, the person is watching, you are assisting yeah, the person yeah, to, to watch. watch. Yeah. So I'm just trying to tell them that I'm not different from you. We are the same. Yeah, we are the same. We oh. can be at your level, it's not oh, a problem. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that'll be for the trends today as we wrap it up and make it for Metro Sports. But of course, mm -hmm. happy birthday to uh, Junior, uh, Junior Abbey. <laughs> it's Jason. <laughs> Jason. Mm -hmm. Jason Abbey. Uh, 12 years. Well, you see what Doc has been doing to me. Uh, 12 years. What, what, what was I? 12. <laughs> 12, 12, 12. I remember about 16 years ago. Wow, that's far. 2004. Oh, Jason. You were 16 years old. No, no, 16 years ago, I was 12. Uh -huh. uh, so it means that's that... like, yeah. 
Ah, this. Don't worry. See, dog has been doing this. I have a swap. Happy birthday to you. Oh, I also shout to Eugene, though. You know, people who meet our right are like, yo, Charlie, we watch the trends every day. We are even late to work, mm. but we watch it. Thank you so much for always watching. Eugene is a new boy town. Shouts to you. Yeah, dog. So that's it for mm. the trends today. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a wrap. Mm. Yeah. All right. So that'll be it. Yep. Okay. So uh, thanks for watching Up Next Metro Sports. Got the runway walk of your dreams or a unique look that sets you apart.